Who put those books on the upper shelf? And why were my clothes in the closet reorganized? Did she seriously go into my room and rearrange my stuff? Unbelievable! Avery, dinner's ready. Okay, Dad, wait a sec. My dad shouted back. What's taking you so long? Come down now. Dinner is getting cold. Ugh, okay, I'm coming. As I walked into the kitchen, I gave her a resentful look. What were you doing? You know dinner's always at six. Well, that's because she went into my room and reorganized everything. It was like Hurricane Katrina stopped by my room. I had to put everything back where it was. You must be wondering why I had this attitude towards my mom. Well, first, she isn't my mom. She's my stepmom. And second, I just couldn't stand her. You see, my parents divorced when I was 15. And after just six months, my dad started dating Rose. My first impressions weren't great. I mean, look at her. Okay, she's kind of beautiful, but her style just doesn't fit her age. She has this whole wannabe rocker thing going on. No, I'm serious. She even has a tank top that says, I'm a rocker mom. My actual mom was the total opposite of Rose. She looks how a mom's meant to, with her elegant clothes and polite demeanor. And that's also how she raised me to be. Then there's the age difference. Rose is a decade younger than dad. Suspicious? What if she was only after his money? I thought they wouldn't last, but then one year later, they announced that they were getting married. So, yeah, you can see where my hate was coming from. That's enough of me telling you about my family. Let's go back to this boring dinner. My dad just gently said, Rose was just helping you. She didn't mean it. Now let's dig in. This smells delicious, honey. Ugh, whatever. I rolled my eyes and sat at the table. I looked down and couldn't believe my eyes. It was spinach and sausage lasagna, mom's signature dish. How dare Rose copy it? First, she rearranged my room, and now she wanted to replace my mom? Talk about a real-life evil stepmom. No way I was going to eat that. So I stood up, said I wasn't hungry, and started walking off. Dad stood up and was about to yell at me, but Rose stopped him. Whatever. I still ran upstairs and slammed my door shut. The next day, when I came home from school, I saw that Rose had a few friends over for beer and pizza in the living room. Look at them. They looked like they were having a band meeting. Normally, women their age have tea parties, not fast food fests. Hey, Avery. Rose greeted me. I just ignored her and went upstairs. But suddenly, I heard one of her friends say, What a stubborn kid. Doesn't she have manners? If I were you, I would show the kid who's the boss around here. Jesus, her friends were awful just like her. Whatever, I didn't care what they said. But then Rose replied, Hey, don't talk about her like that. Avery's a lovely girl. She's just had a lot going on the past two years. Every child would behave the same after their parents' divorce, don't they? She just needs a little time adjusting. Oh, wow. I didn't expect those words coming from Rose. She actually stood up for me? Maybe, just maybe, I've misjudged her. Maybe I should try and give her a fairer chance? So, that evening, when I saw her watching a movie, I walked over with a big bowl of popcorn and asked if I could join her. Rose looked shocked, like she'd seen a ghost or something. Then she gave me a big smile and said, Of course. I would really love that. I sat down next to her, and we watched Mad Max together. Oh, wow. There was a lot of violence and some weird-looking characters. Normally, I don't watch these kinds of films. I'm more of a rom-coms girl. But that movie was really, um, interesting. We talked during it, and I must say Rose is actually kinda cool. We were both laughing when I heard someone coughing behind me. I turned around to see my mom standing there with a frown on her face. Avery? Why didn't you return my calls and messages? Oh, I haven't introduced my mom to you yet. This is my beautiful mom, Melanie. She's a kind, gentle, elegant woman, and also a bit disciplined. 
but that's okay. I still love my mom very much. Mom? What are you doing here? I called you a dozen times, but you didn't answer. Clearly, you're preoccupied. I got worried, so I swung by to check on you. Oh, sorry, Mom. Rose and I were having so much fun that I didn't notice my phone. My mom knitted her brows and asked, Are we still on for shopping tomorrow? You need a new outfit for the debate contest, right? Yeah, of course. I will meet you at the mall after school. Oh, you two are going shopping? That's so cool. Can I join? At that moment, I thought, what a great idea. I mean, so far, they seem to get along okay. But what I didn't know was that a war between my mom and my stepmom had just launched. Rose gave me an excited smile. But mom, on the other hand, didn't look so thrilled. Maybe she was still mad that I missed her calls? So the next day after school, I went outside and saw my mom standing by her car. Oh, was she waiting for me? I was about to walk toward her when I suddenly noticed she was giving dirty looks to someone. Oh my god, Rose was waiting on the other side of the street. I quickly jumped behind some bushes to hide from them. Don't tell me the two were here to pick me up. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was mom. There's no way I was deciding between them. So I told her I was already on my way to the mall. Ugh. Now, let's talk about my fun family day out at the mall. Hmm. It was a disaster. My mom and Rose have very different style, ofs. So my mom chose this elegant black vest and skirt for me, but Rose thought I looked like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> no offense, she's a badass who brought justice to women, but Rose was kinda right. That outfit just didn't work for me. Then Rose chose this red dress for me. But, oh man, that's kind of revealing. They were constantly dragging me from this shop to the other like they were playing tug of war. And I was the freaking rope. I couldn't handle it anymore. Therefore, I just chose any dress so they'd stop throwing clothes in my face. On the way out of the mall, we passed a piercing shop. I've been wanting a helix piercing at the upper cartilage of my ear. They look so cool. I asked mom, but she profusely refused. Her own words were, it would make you look rebellious. His mom was still strict as always. Nonsense. Rose snorted. Melanie, Avery's old enough to make her own decisions. If she wants a piercing, then let her. Then she turned to me and said, come, I will take you inside. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. I glanced at mom, and she looked like she was about to explode with anger. But Rose had a point. I'm already 16 for crying out loud. After 15 minutes, Rose and I came out. Oh, thank God. Did you reconsider getting that ear piercing? Oh, yeah. Rose said that a nose piercing would suit me better. What? Uh-oh. Maybe the nose piercing wasn't such a good idea, because the tension between them was now catastrophic. Hmm, I needed a way to bring them together. So I came up with a brilliant plan. I arranged a holiday in Brazil for us all. I have a friend there, Pedro. He was an exchange student at my school, so he could show us around. Dad was in on the plan. At the last minute, he pretended to be busy and canceled his spot. Perfect. Now Rose and Mom would have plenty of bonding time. As soon as we walked into the hotel lobby, they started fighting over who got to share a room with me. What's wrong with them? We just landed in Brazil. So I took the keys from the receptionist and told them they were sharing, because I'll be by myself. <laughs> then in the evening, after we all got some rest, I waited for them in the lobby. Man, what's taking them so long? Suddenly, I saw two women walking over, and they were pushing each other. My God. It was Rose and Mom. I tried to keep calm and said, Jesus, can you two please stop acting like kindergarten kids? Mom sneered. Well, Rose over here took a 45-minute shower while I urgently needed to use the bathroom. You know how sensitive my stomach is. Rose rolled her eyes. That's because I have a strict beauty routine to follow. At least you got some sleep. I didn't, thanks to your bulldozer snoring. I certainly did not. 
Then they began to stare off like two UFC fighters. I shouted, Enough already! Listen up! I just made a dinner reservation for you two to get to know each other better. I have plans with Pedro, so I'll catch you both later. They were about to refuse, but I gave them this really intense look. Well, at least you're having fun. You two should hit a bar. Nothing can top some Brazilian bars. No drinking! And be back by 10 p.m. tops. Yeah, yeah, I know. Have fun! I waved at them and left the hotel. The next morning, I saw them talking to each other. Actually talking, not bickering. So I walked over to them and asked, Well, how was dinner? Then they told me it was actually really great. They were able to put their differences aside and got along. Success! <laughs> so now I could enjoy the rest of the trip. After breakfast, Pedro came by to take us on a hiking trip in the forest. It was so wonderful. The fresh air, the birds singing. Well, maybe except for the heat and the mosquitoes. Pedro wanted to bring us to this spot he said was perfect for watching the sunset. Awesome! It was all going well at first, but then as Rose avoided a tree branch, it accidentally hit my mom. My god, you hit me on purpose, didn't you? What? That's absurd. I was just avoiding the branch. Oh, please. As if. Are you saying that I'm lying? Hey, guys, stop it. Let's be more understanding and talk things out. Like how you did it last night, okay? That's when I found out that they were just pretending to be friends so that I didn't set up any more dinners for them. Oh my god, unbelievable! After their friendship act was exposed, they began speed hiking, like they were in a competition or something. But yep, after only 15 minutes, they were exhausted and couldn't even stand straight anymore. I began to shout at them. This is great! Your dumb feud is ruining my vacation! Then I walked away to avoid them, but of course, not too far. As I walked, I tried to think of another plan to get them close. Then I realized I'd wandered further away from the group. Okay, Avery, don't panic. Pedro had given me a map of the forest. I just needed to get to that marked X. It sounded easy. Trust me, it wasn't. I walked for hours and still couldn't find the spot. Oh no. It was getting dark, and I was totally exhausted. I sat on the ground and couldn't hold back my tears. I was about to lose hope when I suddenly heard Rose and Mom's voices. Oh, great. I was lost and could still hear them arguing in my head. I must be losing my mind. But wait. Suddenly, they appeared from behind some trees. It was really them. I couldn't believe it. I ran into their arms and gave them both the biggest hug ever and cried like a baby. Before we went to the airport to head home, Pedro came to say goodbye. Thanks for the hiking trip and also carrying out my plan. No problem. Your plan was definitely crazy, but it totally worked. After you went missing, they actually teamed up to find you. They helped one another when one tripped down or got exhausted and kept each other motivated. Pedro grinned at me, then continued. I too was freaking out when I didn't see you at our meeting point. Luckily, I still found you. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that pretending to be lost was a part of my plan, but what I didn't expect was to actually get lost. Thank God for Pedro. And you know what? After that incident, my mom and Rose grew close. Actually, a bit too close, I think. <laughs> They even sometimes hang out without me. Can you believe it? Turns out, even though they have two very different personalities and styles, they still have one big thing in common. They both love me. Finally, after an 11-hour flight, I arrived at LAX. Los Angeles International Airport. It's awesome! I can't wait to see my mom. You see, my dad's French and my mom's American. We used to all live together in France, but then they split up and mom moved back here. Of course, I've talked to her on FaceTime and stuff, 
but this will be the first time I've properly seen her in five years. I haven't visited before because mom's a super successful businesswoman and she works really hard. That meant she wouldn't have the time to provide me with the attention I needed. But now that I'm 16 and I can look after myself, I'm finally able to visit. So thanks to my dad and stepmom for my plane ticket birthday present, I'm now in sunny LA for a whole month. Not only do I get to spend time with mom, but I also get to chill out in her enormous villa. Ah, <sighs> bliss. But first, let's get all my luggage, then find a taxi to my mom's. Yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't come to pick me up since she had some work to do. But no problem, I can handle this myself. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. It's been half an hour and my luggage was nowhere to be seen. Then, this handsome guy approached me and said, Hey, looks like your luggage has gone AWOL. Do you need any help? Cute and helpful. Hmm, I could totally get used to US guys. I showed him my ticket, and turns out, I was waiting at the wrong carousel. Oops. After guiding me to the correct one, this guy, whose name I found out was Zach, even pulled my luggage down for me. But one of my cases got stuck and burst open, causing everything to tumble out. Girl, it's not your lucky day, is it? He burst out laughing. Oh well, at least it wasn't all bad. I mean, a cute guy had rescued me, right? He helped me pick up my things, then he offered to drive me to my mom's house. After some 30 minutes, he began to slow down. I looked out the window and, oh my god! This is the chicest villa ever! The pool, the tennis court, the palm trees. It was exactly like a movie star home. I was gawping at the villa when suddenly I heard a car engine sound. Startled, I turned around to see Zach zooming away. My suitcases! I yelled. Ugh, my laptop and iPad were in there too. Oh God, why is this happening to me? And on my very first day in the US? At least I still had my phone and passport with me. Phew. So I called my mom. Needless to say, I was a distraught mess when she arrived. Who'd have thought that such a kind-looking guy would turn out to be a thief? Anyways, my mom could buy me new clothes and things, and I could still have an amazing time in her villa, right? Mom led me to my room and told me to get some rest. After that disaster, I was dead exhausted, so I quickly fell asleep on the comfiest bed ever. When I awoke, it was dark outside. I realized I hadn't eaten anything since the flight, so I went downstairs and checked the fridge and cupboards. Huh? They were all empty. I was still digging around in the kitchen when my mom returned with some burgers. Sweetie, I only got back from my business trip yesterday, so I haven't had time to go to the grocery store. Let's just eat fast food today, okay? I didn't mind, as it was awesome to have dinner with my mom again after such a long time. I took a look around the room. There was barely any furniture here. My mom said that's minimalism, a trendy lifestyle in LA nowadays. Less is more. How cool is that? The next morning we went out, but what's with that old rusty car? Seeing my confused look, she quickly explained that this was only temporary as her car was being serviced. But then mom couldn't get the garage door to open. Turns out, normally she had her own chauffeur. But since I've traveled thousands of miles to visit her, she wanted to drive herself. Huh, how sweet. In the following days, my mom and I enjoyed ourselves in LA. Sunbathing by the pool, spa days, shopping. This is definitely the best vacation of my life. At least until that morning, I was awoken by a loud quarrel. Looking down from the stairs, I saw mom in the living room with a strange woman. She was pointing at the couch. Geez, that's where I spilled soy sauce yesterday while eating sushi. Then mom appeared and sounded flustered. She told me to quickly pack my things as we were leaving. Um, mom, is there something wrong? Oh, nothing, sweetie. It's just that the couch is dirty, so let's just get someone in to clean the entire villa. Wow, mom would deep clean the whole house just because of a soy sauce stain? How rich is she? So... Where will we stay this time? A luxurious five-star hotel? Or 
A magnificent mansion in Beverly Hills? <sighs> but then the car came to a stop in front of some shabby apartment building. Huh? This couldn't be right. Mom told me this was her friend's spare apartment, so we would stay here a few days for convenience. Elena, it's probably best if you stay away from the people in this area. They don't have the same lifestyle as us. You know what I mean. Ugh. Yeah, this place was the opposite of the villa. Cramped room, hard bed, and the bathroom didn't even have a bathtub. Since moving here, Mom didn't take me out anymore. In the evenings, she dressed up all elegantly and went out to her fancy work meetings. On one such evening, I was sitting alone watching YouTube, munching on french fries for the fifth time this week, when there was a knock on the door. I opened it, and standing there was a scruffy guy, claiming to be Frankie, the landlord's son. I told him there must be a mistake, as we were only here for a few days. Then I went to close the door, but he blocked it with his foot. Miss Anita has rented this apartment for two years. What do you mean a few days? I just saw her take a cab at the front door. Don't lie to me. No, my mom is a successful businesswoman who has a villa in Brentwood Park. Then you must have mistaken your mom for someone else. In short, remind your businesswoman mom to pay the rent. Then he sneered and walked away. How dare he say that? And why did I keep on running into jerks? Ugh! When mom returned, I told her what had happened. I thought she'd find it funny or something, but... Nope. Instead, she got really mad. You shouldn't have opened the door to him. I told you not to socialize with the people here. Okay, hearing made-up lies about yourself like that must suck, but did she have to be so furious about it? The next morning, I was drinking tea on the balcony when suddenly I saw a familiar face passing by down the street. My god, it was the jerk from the airport. Zack! That thief! I shouted, rushing down. But when I got there, he disappeared. I was still exasperated when a voice came from behind. What on earth are you doing screaming this early in the morning? I turned around to see Frankie leaning against the wall with his arms folded. None of your business, swindler. Huh? Swindler? What do you mean? Quit lying. I already told my mom all about you trying to con money out of me. Hmm, is that so? So, you think I'm the liar? Before I could answer that provoking question, I heard my mom's voice calling down from the balcony. Hey, rich girl, if you want a reality check, I suggest you come meet me tonight, and we'll go follow your mom. Mom appeared and, frowning, asked me why I was talking to Frankie. I blurted out something about asking for directions, then quickly entered the room and closed the door. Frankie was clearly a thieving, lying jerk, right? But then, why were his words lingering in my mind? I had noticed a few strange things, such as when we were at the villa, I asked mom where the cutlery was, but she couldn't remember. But then in this apartment, she immediately got it. Plus, why was there a photo of her in the bedroom when this was her friend's place? That night, when mom was getting ready to go out again, I spotted her necklace. Only, it was actually my necklace. The one that had been stolen along with the rest of my stuff. My dad got that necklace custom made just for me, so it was a one of a kind, but why did mom have it? I complimented her on it and asked her where she got it from. Blushing, she excitedly told me that this rich man she'd just started dating had bought it for her. Then she said he was taking her for dinner tonight. I forced a smile, but... My head was filled with questions. Who really was... Mom? I secretly followed my mom down the street. Suddenly, a hand patted my shoulder. Let's go. I turned around and it was Frankie. Without saying anything, I nodded and quickly got into his car. And we followed mom's taxi. Hold on. Isn't that the villa we stayed in before? After a while, a luxury car arrived, taking my mom to a nearby expensive restaurant. We peered through the glass wall. There she was. My mom was sitting there, smiling and talking with some man in a suit. Was she pretending to live in that villa to trick that man? Was my mom a gold digger? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I pulled on Frankie's arm. 
But weirdly, he seemed to be as shocked as I was. Um, wasn't this your idea? So why the pale face? He just shook his head and took me home. We waited in the apartment for Mum to return, and oh boy, it was tense. Around midnight, we heard the door open, and Mum walked in and looked at us in alarm. She started shooing Frankie out of there, but I interrupted her. Mum, I know everything. You've lived here for two years. You're poor, and you scam rich men. Sweetie, it's not like that. Please calm down and I'll explain everything to you. So, it turns out, after divorcing my dad, she was determined to go back to the U.S. and succeed at business. But she failed, and she was so embarrassed, she lied to me and dad. Then when she heard that I was coming to visit, she spent the little savings she had on renting a swanky villa for me. But when I accidentally spilled soy sauce on that expensive couch, she couldn't afford to fix it. So we were kicked out. As for the man I was with tonight, I ran into him while walking outside the villa. He's rich and nice. He likes me and I like him too. But what about that necklace? Mom, it's actually mine. It was in my stolen suitcase. My mom gave me a confused look. But before she could say anything, Frankie blurted out, That man's a fraud. Mom and I gaped at Frankie as he turned to me and said, I'm sorry, but I think you guys need to know the truth. Then Frankie told us how that man was none other than Zack's dad. After taking me back to the villa, Zack figured my mom was rich, so he persuaded his dad to come and flirt with her. But how did you dig up the dirt on these guys? Because I know Zack. When I saw Lana chasing him, I knew he'd stolen from her. But he's my friend. Great! So you've both been lying to me. Then I rushed into my room, locked the door, and burst into tears. The next morning, Mom knocked on my door, but I ignored her. Elena, I get that you're upset with me, but I've left a sandwich here, so please at least eat something. I'm really sorry. Just wanted to be the perfect mother for you. Her words caused me to sob all over again. But I can say... From the bottom of my heart, I feel sorry for her. After that, I opened the door and hugged her tightly, and then we both blubbered into each other's arms. I'm leaving L.A. today, with Mum. She's moving back to France with me, where she can start afresh. While I was dragging my suitcase to the taxi, Frankie appeared and apologized to me. I just shrugged and told him it didn't matter anymore. I mean, at least he came clean in the end and saved my mom from that swindler. Hey, rich girl, good luck. And, um, feel free to keep in touch. So, what now? Well, mom is settling back into French life. She has a new job and a chic apartment. I go and stay with her each weekend, and it's good to finally spend time with the real her. As for Frankie, well, we send each other lots of Snapchats. So... Okay, maybe I kind of like him. I'm planning to visit him in the summer. Hopefully my next trip to the U.S. won't be as crazy as my last one. <laughs> Here I am at a press conference, standing in front of countless reporters. Oh, no, no, that's not me. There you go. I'm Alexia, 17 years old. I may look like a high schooler, but unlike kids my age, I'm a bodyguard. How so? Well, I was adopted by an underground security organization after being abandoned at a young age. Thankfully, Papa, my savior, was around to teach me everything from math to martial arts. Honestly, it was the happiest time of my life, but he'd gone too soon due to cancer, and it's like I was abandoned again. Didn't leave me any time to grieve, the organization put me on training from dusk till dawn, saying I needed to make my papa proud. So I always tried my best and stayed on top at martial arts. However, due to my clumsiness, I ended up as just a bodyguard for VIPs with a codename 036. How boring. <sighs> Until one day, I was summoned by the boss. 036, we have a special task for you. His name is David Smith principal of Woodford High School. Another dull escort, again. Ugh. 
you will investigate Mr. Smith for a financial regulation violation by disguising as a new student at Woodford and collect everything related to him, his wife, and daughter. So be extremely careful. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Finally! Goodbye, boring bodyguard job! Time to prove myself! I'll make Papa proud, and to be honest, I'm also excited to experience the life of a high schooler. Now, I needed to do some shopping. Since I only have suits to wear on duty, I didn't know how to dress like a real student. Oh, wow. Look at all these dazzling clothes. After a lot of contemplating, I decided to take this pretty dress. This thing, and also these. They're matching, right? But the saleswoman asked me if they were for my little sister. Huh? What does she mean? Then she picked out something else for me. I was about to try it on when a scream startled me. Help! Thief! Help! Ugh, not a single day went by without trouble. I bolted in that direction and... Aha! Not today, thief! Are you crazy? I'm not the thief. Let me go. Just then, I heard a thud and saw another man in blue being tackled to the ground by two security guards, while a woman snatched the bag out of his hands. Oops, I just caught the wrong guy. I immediately released him. Turned out he was chasing the thief too, but no matter how much I apologized, he kept rambling that I was a violent lunatic and even suspected me of being an accomplice. This guy was unbelievable. He better wish he'd never see me again. Else the next kick won't be a mistake. Today is my first day at school. My disguise was so good, even I couldn't recognize myself. There's no way I'd get caught. From now on, I'll go by the name Alexia. Much better than 036, isn't it? Wait, I know her. Bella Smith, one of my objects. <laughs> wow, the audacity of those girls to pick on their own principal's daughter. Alright, Alexia's coming to your rescue. But not in my normal way. So, here comes a clumsy nerd who accidentally bumped into them, spilling coffee over them, buying time for the prey to run away. The mean girls let out horrified yelps, then yelled at me before running to the restroom. <laughs> then, I turned to see Bella talking to a boy. Oh no, it wasn't just any boy, it was that obnoxious jerk from the mall. What are the odds? Then, they headed toward me. While Bella kept thanking me, I caught a staring look from this guy. You seem familiar. Have we met before? No, nope. no way. How's that possible? It's my first day here. Phew, he seemed not to recognize me. So, he's Clark, Bella's best friend. Now how am I supposed to approach her when her company was this guy? <sighs> Anyways, my first class is about to start. Now excuse me, I have this perfect cover of a schoolgirl that I need to keep up. Newbie, tell me. Where was the American Declaration of Independence signed? Um, at the bottom of the paper, madam? The whole class burst into laughter. How embarrassing! But how was I supposed to know? Papa didn't teach me this. Then suddenly, I heard this alarming sound. Don't panic. I'll handle this. Follow me to the hallway. But no one did. Instead, they laughed even louder. I was still dumbfounded when a nice girl told me it's just an end-of-class bell. Oh, that's what it was. Finally, a break from all those exhausting lessons. Now let's check if the food is safe. Okay, pass. I was about to eat the carrot. Then the mean girls from earlier appeared. Yes, eat it. That'll help your poor eyesight. And this is for staining my dress. Then they strutted off. Ugh. In other places, those folks would have known the taste of my fist. Hey, Alexia. Alexia. So noisy. This place is like a beehive. Alexia! Oh wait, that's my new name. I turned around to see Bella. She wanted to join me for lunch. Here comes the chance. But nope, the tag-along Clark is also here. Jeez. <sighs> I asked Bella why those mean girls teased her, the principal's daughter, but she just shook her head unknowingly. Hmm, but I think I've kind of figured out the reason after talking with her. I noticed that she was a bit slower than her peers, as when I cracked a joke, it took her a while to understand and laugh along. So, prying out information from her should be easy. If only... You've just moved here. How do you know she's the principal's daughter? Uh, uh, I heard from others. This party pooper. Jeez. <sighs> the first week didn't go too well, as I was still getting used to being called Alexia and not inspecting my own locker. Also, this load of homework? In general, I enjoy learning stuff at school, but the mission hasn't progressed one bit. 
I had to pick up the pace. So using the voice changer, I tricked Mr. Smith to leave his office, then sneaked in there. But suddenly, Bella came in. Panicking, I blurted out I was cleaning the desk for the principal. She seemed convinced and even joined me. Another time, I saw the principal talking to someone in the hallway and was about to take pictures with my spy camera pen when Clark appeared and bombarded me with stupid questions. Jesus Christ, if things carried on like this, when on earth would I finish my mission? One day, I spotted Bella in trouble with the mean girls again. Ugh, do these brats ever learn? This is too much. I need to settle this once and for all. So I ran over and quickly pulled Bella away, telling her to run. Then, I threw my famous flying kicks, along with some front sweeps, and got all the meanies knocked on the ground in a blink. Justice served. <laughs> I dusted my hands together in triumph, but has Clark just witnessed everything? This guy was way too suspicious. He probably would ruin my secret mission someday. I need to look into this guy. And it didn't take long for me to find out he wasn't from a wealthy family like most of the other students. He got into this prestigious school on a scholarship for being brainy. Now here I was in Clark's family's bakery. Oh, this girl has his eyes and hair color. We talked and immediately clicked. She was Enola, Clark's sister. She has Down syndrome, but she's a real talent. Look, aren't her designs stunning? I was flipping through Enola's sketchbook when Clark suddenly showed up and dragged me outside. Why did you follow me here? I know you're up to something. Who is the suspicious one here? It's you who always coincidentally appears wherever I am. I only followed you here because you've been stalking me and looking shady. That got Clark speechless. Then his sister came to us saying, Uh, Alexia, Enola really likes playing with you. Rather, let her come inside. His attitude completely changed hearing that. He gently told me that other people often tease Enola because of her condition. He also apologized for misunderstanding me and offered me a free cinnamon swirl. Wasn't this the first time I'd seen him smile? I'd never been so close to him like this. And suddenly, I felt something churning in my stomach. Perhaps I'd eaten too much. <laughs> After that, our conflict was naturally settled. Me and Clark became closer and I got to know other aspects of him. He was really gentle and helpful. The more we talked, the more flutters I felt. Oh no, what's wrong with me? Worse still, I even started to feel uncomfortable when Bella was close to Clark. He always helps her with the smallest things, like opening the door, holding an umbrella for her, and even opening water bottles. She always overacted as if she wanted Clark to protect her all the time. No, get yourself together, Alexia. No, 036, you have a mission to do. So, I faked having period cramps to get out of P.E. and sneak into Mr. Smith's office again. I rummaged through the trash can, but there's nothing useful. Then, I noticed a locked drawer. And guess what? There was a notepad and an envelope full of money. Then, by shading the paper with a pencil, the letters gradually appeared. It's an address and a time. So, the principal's going to make a transaction there? Got it. Then, on the way out, I clumsily knocked over a pile of documents on his desk. Wait, there was a picture of a woman holding two babies with scribbles. I'll love you three forever. But Bella told me she was an only child. Then, who's this? And here's that place. The middle of nowhere. Exactly where something fishy would happen. 429. It's almost time. Someone's coming. Wait, it's the woman in that picture. She's older, but it's definitely her. And then Principal Smith appeared. They seemed really close. They'd been talking and he handed her an envelope. That envelope? So she was his. What now? Haven't given up on stalking others. Okay, listen carefully. I think Principal Smith is involved in a financial violation case. But not just that. I just got him two timing. See? N no way. That's my... Okay, I will keep this secret for you on one condition. Let me join this investigation. The principal has been supportive of my scholarship. I don't think he's that type of person. What? He wanted to work with me? That sounded risky, but as long as I kept my mouth shut about the organization, I could spend some Bella free time with him. Good, right? A few days later, Clark told me to meet him at a cafe to discuss the investigation. But it's been ages and he still hasn't shown up. Then out of nowhere, a beautiful cake was presented in front of my eyes. Oh my, it's Clark, singing happy birthday and even gave me a present. Birthday? 
I myself didn't know when my birthday was. Why, he... And the cake, did he make it himself for me? Aw, he's so sweet. I got so emotional that I almost blurted out my feelings to him. But right at that moment, Bella, out of the blue, jumped in between us. Typical Bella, never leave us alone. Turns out, she was actually the one to insist her dad let her see my student records and make my first birthday cake ever. Thank you guys, I've never had a birthday before, cause I have no, uh, no, because my parents are always away. Then we should celebrate properly, at your house, how about that? What? Why did he suggest that? But then Clark winked at me. Heh, <laughs> seems like we had a plan. Arriving at her home, we were warmly greeted by Bella's parents. It was such a delicious home-cooked meal, so this was what it was like to have a family. Bella had this all the time? But poor her, she didn't know about her father's a cheater. <sighs> we were in the middle of dinner when Clark asked Mr. Smith about a science project he was doing. Then Clark winked at me again. That's my cue. So I excused myself to use the restroom, then sneaked into Mr. Smith's office. This pen was magical. Let's see what Bella's dear father was hiding. Oh, he withdrew the same amount of money each month. Yay! Today was a success! Thanks to Clark's clever plan, I would finally got something useful. Suddenly, our eyes met and he looked at me gently while leaning closer. I was ready for a kid when my boss called me. I did not assign this mission for you to play house with that criminal. You have three days, or else I'll have someone more capable taking care of this. Such a waste of your papa's expectation. Am I really that useless? Thinking I'd let papa down, I couldn't help but burst into tears. What happened? Who's that? Tell me. I'll handle him. Clark, it may sound weird, but I'm actually a spy. A uh, what? Clark was shocked, obviously, so we sat down on a bench and I blurted out everything to him. Clark didn't say a word and just gently held me in his arms, which made me feel so relieved. You may wonder why Bella and I were in this deserted place. The thing is, a few days after that call, my boss ordered me to bring Bella here to kidnap her and use the documents I gathered to blackmail the principal into resigning. I guess that could help me get rid of the third wheel Bella and have Clark all to myself, right? Oh, isn't that our school's vice president? So he was behind everything after all. Then suddenly, freeze, hands in the air. Oh my god, the police? Why were they here? Along with Mr. Smith and Clark? We're so doomed. Except, it was my master plan. After receiving the text from my boss, I almost followed his order. But then, I remembered Papa's words. He always told me to never lose my moral compass and never harm others to achieve personal goals. Bella was a good person and shouldn't be punished for whatever her father did. I couldn't betray my first friend like that. So I told Clark and we set up a plan to find out who was behind all this. And here we are. The vice principal was revealed to have hired my organization to spy on the principal to overthrow him. And when he couldn't find any dirt on Mr. Smith, he turned to use Bella as a leverage against her father. How despicable. Also, I can't believe that the new boss led our organization down an evil path like that. But it's not the only truth revealed. But Principal Smith, how do you explain your monthly money withdrawal? I had a close friend who unfortunately passed away at a young age. He asked me to send his money to his legitimate son and daughter, whom he'd kept a secret due to family pressure. So there's nothing more going on between you and my mom, right? Huh? What did his mother have to do with this? Turns out the woman he met up with the other day was Clark's mom. That means Clark and Enola were the kids in the picture? What a twist! In that case, thank you for taking care of my family all this time. How foolish of me to suspect you and mom. And even investigate you. My apologies. You... you investigated him before? Yes. Actually, it's not a coincidence that I caught you spying on him. Sorry for keeping secrets, but I knew with your impulsive nature, you'd jump to conclusions and approach my mom. Huh? Impulsive? That's how he saw me? Then he knew me pretty well. <laughs> Why is everything so confusing? Can you explain it to me? Did you befriend me just to investigate my dad? Bella, I'm so sorry for how things went down, but please believe me, our friendship is real. Fortunately, Bella was understanding, and we remained good friends. 
Oh, actually, good sisters, because the principal adopted me after I left the organization. <laughs> and I still visit the bakery often to hang out with Enola. Enola is so lucky to have a brother who takes care of her. I wish I could have one. No, sorry, I can't do that. Why? Because I'll take care of you in a different way. Bye, Auntie! I wave to her. I promise I'll be fine at home alone! That's good! I'll be back soon, B. Then she left. That's my Auntie Anna. I was staying with her while my parents were on vacation. I was about to walk back into the living room when the doorbell rang, so I immediately ran to the door and looked through the peephole. Ah! It was Mom! I quickly opened the door and rushed out to hug her tightly. Mommy! How come you're back so early? Mom stroked my hair and softly said, Oh, sweetie, I came to pick you up. How can I leave my little princess alone? Now hurry up and pack your things. I gave a confused look. But Auntie Anna's at the grocery store. Shouldn't we wait for her? She shook her head. No, sweetie. I already called her. So we quickly packed my things, and Mom led me outside to a rather old car, which was completely different from our usual BMW. Mom, where's Dad? This isn't our car. I asked her. She knelt in front of me and smiling said, Daddy's waiting for us at the beach. It's going to be lots of fun. I jumped up and down excitedly. Yay! I couldn't wait to build sandcastles and splash in the sea. This was so cool. On the way, I must have fallen asleep, as when I opened my eyes, it was already dark outside. I got out of the car and looked around. Hmm, where was the ocean? All I saw was some small house in an unfamiliar neighborhood. Beatrice, this is our new home. Just you and me from now on. Mom's sudden words totally woke me up. Mom, why? What about Dad? I stammered. Listen, I'm sorry. I can't explain it to you at the moment. You're too young to understand. I had so many questions flying around my head, but looking at Mom's sad face, I knew I shouldn't ask her anymore. The next morning, I woke up excited and curious about our new beginning here. I opened the curtain and saw a group of kids my age playing across the street. So, without thinking, I rushed outside to join them. Hello, I'm Beach. Suddenly, my mom came out of nowhere, a frantic look on her face as she shouted, I told you to stay inside, and pulled me back home. Everyone was gawping at us, including the man who lived across the street. It was so embarrassing. As soon as the door slammed shut, in a serious tone, she said, We just moved here. You shouldn't make friends with strangers that fast. And don't talk too much about yourself, okay? Mom had never minded me playing with other kids before. So why now? This didn't make any sense. After that, she only let me out of the house for school. And she always kept an eye on me. So that's why I couldn't make any friends here. I resented her so much. I was so lonely. One good thing about it was she didn't have any house rules so I could spend all day watching cartoons while eating junk food, and she didn't mind at all. This was great, as before we moved here, Mom and Dad never let me do stuff like this. But eventually, I got sick of those junk foods. I felt kinda icky. I longed for Mom's special spaghetti with crab sauce, so I begged her to make it. At first, she refused, saying that she was very busy, so I kept on whining until she finally agreed. Later, I went to the kitchen for dinner, and the room was an utter chaos. Pots and pans everywhere. Mom looked messy, too, as she passed me a plate of spaghetti and meatballs instead of her signature dish. Well, okay, it looked delicious anyway, so I took a full fork of it as Mom watched on. Poof! Water! I need water! Gosh, it's so salty! Mom quickly replaced my pasta plate with a box of fried chicken and said, Today I'm busy, so I was a bit distracted. Sorry, honey. Her awkwardness made me laugh. Nah, it's okay, Mom. 
Mom did seem really busy lately, as her phone was always buzzing. The calls even came late at night when I was asleep, so she always quietly went out to answer it. Guess it's hard being a single mom after all, so I tried to be more understanding. And just like that, time passed. Staying inside and having no friends became the norm for me. Still, I often sat by the window and stared longingly at the kids playing outside. Then one time, when I was doing this, Mom appeared and asked me if I wanted to go to the nearby amusement park. Wow, could there be anything better than this? I leaped up, clapped excitedly, then wrapped my arms around her. Honestly, the park was pretty small, and everything seemed kind of tired looking. But this didn't matter, as it was the best day I'd ever had. Mom never used to like rides or games, but today was different. She even got excited when she saw the beanbag throwing stall. She knocked the tins down in one go and won me this giant cuddly bunny. I've never seen her have fun like this before. My mom is so cool. Afterward, mom left me sitting on a bench and she went off to get some ice cream. Suddenly, I saw her rushing back and without ice creams. She pulled on my hand and in an urgent tone said, We need to go home. We're moving. So we packed up our things and left in a rush. I kept on asking mom what was going on, but she dodged my questions. During the car journey, I heard her mutter to herself, We're going somewhere new. It'll be exciting. A new adventure. Yes, it'll be fine this time. I may have been young, but I wasn't stupid. I knew she was hiding something. But she's my mom, and I didn't want to upset her by bugging her with questions. So I stayed quiet and eventually fell asleep. Once again, I woke up in an unfamiliar place and stared out of the window. I wasn't as bothered about this place as I was about the last. I didn't want to get too attached to it, as I didn't know how long it'd be before Mum made us move again. But there was one thing that bothered me. Across the street was a man looking straight at our new house. Hmm. He looked identical to our previous neighbor. Maybe he'd just move here too? What a coincidence! I mentioned the man to mom, but she told me she didn't know him, and then sternly told me never to interact with him. At school, I was the strange kid who didn't talk to anyone. The older I got, the worse this felt. And the other kids laughed at me, and I heard them call me weird behind my back. I felt so lonely and depressed. So at home, I often just sat by the window with a book and tried to pretend that the adventures I was reading about were happening to me. <sighs> Worse still, Mom was acting even odder than usual. The other day when I got home from school, I found her chucking perfectly good food out of the fridge. Some were even brand new. I asked her what she was doing and she replied, It's gone off, so I'm getting rid of it. Then she started scrubbing the fridge. The smell won't go. Why won't it go? What was she talking about? Everything seemed fine. What's happening? Then I discovered that mom often left the house late at night and didn't return till dawn. I knew if I asked her about this, she wouldn't say anything. So that night, I snuck out and followed her. Mom was wearing dark clothes with a hat and a big scarf covering her face, even though it's not that cold outside. Hmm, why the disguise? Then, can you believe it? I spotted her going over to the neighbor's house and cuddling him on his porch. I jumped out of the darkness and shouted, Mom, what's going on? I thought we weren't meant to talk to this man. She gave me an alarmed look. I... At that moment, Mom received a text. In a panicked voice, she said to me, Beatrice, we have to go. Now, I'll explain everything later, I promise. Right after that, the mysterious man waved at us and told us to get in his car. Then he sped through the night. After regaining my senses, I turned to my mom and asked, I hope this explanation is good. Um, actually, we're in danger, honey. It's your dad. He's an imposter. I only figured this out when I was on vacation with him and I've been running from him ever since. What? I'd never suspected my dad of being someone else. It made no sense. Then, through sobs, my mom continued to say that my real dad was actually a member of a secret organization, but he had been missing for a while, and now the organization was after us. She often received anonymous messages and calls threatening her. She didn't want me talking to strangers in case they were spies. 
and those times when she threw all the food out was because she'd received texts threatening to poison the food in our house. She wiped her tears away, then said, This is Joe. We went to college together, and he's been such a help. We fell in love, but I didn't dare tell you because I was afraid you wouldn't understand. I looked at this Joe guy. I don't know. There was something off about him. But maybe I was just being paranoid. I mean, he had helped Mom out, right? Ah, what's that? Ever since I found out about the secret organization, I've been kind of jittery. What if they suddenly turn up and take me and my mom away? I know Mom's worried too, as she seems so distant. I just want to make things better for us both. Then Christmas arrived. It was quite the special one, as for the first time since we went into hiding, we had guests. Well, one guest, Joe. We raised our glasses for a Merry Christmas, but instead of putting it down, my mom gulped it back in one go. Mom, are you drinking tonight? I asked skeptically. Of course, my dear. It's Christmas. Let me tell you, I'm no less than a man when it comes to drinking. <laughs> I chewed on my lip as I thought about this. Mom had an alcohol allergy, and at the most, she only had tiny sips. Suddenly, a thought came to mind. Maybe Dad wasn't the imposter after all. Maybe it had been Mom all along. She enjoyed the roller coaster rides, though to my recollection, Mom was afraid of heights. She couldn't cook. She now loved Joe, a strange man, and she could downed alcohol without being ill. If this was true, then who could I trust now? Something wasn't right. I could feel it in my gut. So the next day, I secretly went to the cops instead of school as usual. Then I found out something crazy. Turns out, my real parents had been looking for me for over the past six years. O-M-G. As for the mother I was living with, who was she? I tried to stay calm while waiting for the police to contact my parents first. And as soon as they got there, the three of us broke down in tears. That's when my real mom told the whole truth. Actually, she had a twin sister called Linda. No one had ever known about Linda, as due to her debt problems, my grandpa rejected her and forbade her to ever show up in front of anyone in the family. But my mom couldn't disown her own twin, so she secretly gave her money. Then one time, Linda was asking for too much that Mom turned her down. Unexpectedly, she came and took me away to pressure my mom to send her more money. During that time, my mom kept transferring her money to make sure I'd be provided for. She hadn't given any information about Linda to the cops, though, because Mom still wanted to talk to her first, though, so that her sister wouldn't end up in trouble. Wow, this was a lot to take in. After that... Mom ran over to Dad, who's in line to talk to the police. She grabbed his hand and begged him to give Auntie Linda a chance. Um, as you see, I missed out on having a normal childhood because of my aunt, and what she did was wrong. But there's a part of me that will always care for her, as she raised me for all these years. And my heart urged me to say, Dad, I didn't want to turn her in either. My dad looked at me hesitantly, but in the end, he nodded in agreement. So we decided to deal with it ourselves without the intervention of the police. Then, the next day as planned, I was in the front yard with my fake mom when her identical twin marched up to our house and confronted her. Once my Auntie Linda got over the initial shock, she confessed everything to me. <sighs> it was sad, but glad that it's all over now. Mom paid off her sister's debts with one condition, that she would never, ever get near me again. Now I'm back home, with my actual parents. It's going to take some getting used to, as I've forgotten how to make friends. And going outside alone makes me nervous. Looks like the memories of the adventure with my uninvited Aunt Linda might follow me for quite some more time. I know I have to try and move forward. I can't get back the past six years, but I can do my best to try and embrace the future. It was a normal Monday morning. I was standing by my locker when this Layla girl walked over. 
leaned against the locker next to mine, and talked to me in this sultry voice. Hi, Ansem. Do you have any plans after school? I looked around in confusion. Huh? Was she talking to me? Usually girls like Layla didn't talk to guys like me. I mean, come on, look at her. She's the hottest girl in school. While I'm Felix, <laughs> just your average-looking nerdy guy. I awkwardly replied, Oh, hi, uh, I'm just doing my homework after school, bye. Then I left her there, dumbfounded. But it didn't end there. At the end of school, she approached me again and asked, Do you want to hang out with me? Followed by a wink. Uh, no thanks, uh, I really have to finish my paper on the French Revolution. Then I walked off. Man, did she really want to hang out with me? <laughs> no way. She must have lost a bet or something. Even on the next day, Layla, one more time, made a beeline for me with this scary, determined look on her face while I was chatting with my friends. And in a serious tone, she said, Look, Felix, do you want to be my boyfriend? What? All my friends started to cheer. I was so embarrassed that I shooed them away to get some privacy with Layla. Um, I'm flattered, but no. She scowled at me. Excuse me? Do you realize that I'm Layla Hall, the prettiest and most popular girl in this entire school? Not to mention a member of the cheerleading team? Ugh, cheerleaders are so dramatic. I calmly replied, Sorry, but you're just not my type. She shouted back, What? I'm everybody's type! I just shrugged and left. My god, that was awkward. But at least she got the hint now, right? Well, wrong. Because that's when the trouble just began. Firstly, it was this flood of junk emails and newsletters. Then strange phone calls from the spa nail salon asking if I had made appointment for the day, which I obviously didn't. On top of that, there's a fake Facebook account that started spreading unflattering pictures of me around, picking my nose in French class, pulling this weird tongue-out concentration face as I checked over my essay. There was even a slow-mo clip of me chewing like a camel as I enjoyed my burger. Man, I was an ugly eater. While I was scrolling through these pics, Layla jumped out at me with a big smirk on her face. Be my boyfriend, then the pranks will stop. Right, uh, of course it was her. Didn't she have better things to do? I shook my head and said, Pfft, no thanks. This still beats being with an annoying girl like you. Then a few days later, as I walked into school, I noticed that everyone was giving me dirty looks. Was my shirt inside out or something? Nope. So what was the problem? I asked some of my friends and, geez. Layla told everyone that I kissed her, then ghosted her. She's a real life Harley Quinn. Hot, but totally crazy. Only a lunatic like the Joker could love her. I'd had enough of her antics. I couldn't let her make me look like the bad guy for something I didn't do. So at lunch, I charged over to her table and yelled in her face. Are you crazy? Why can't you understand that I don't like you? Then I shouted so everyone could hear me. Hey, listen, this rumor about me kissing and ghosting Layla is a total lie. She made it all up because I refused to date her. So please, save your dirty looks for someone else. Thank you. Layla shoved past me and ran out of there. Ugh, okay, maybe I was a little harsh. But you'd brought it on yourself, princess. Then, during French class, she was absent, but no one knew where she went. Was it maybe because of me? Nah, probably not. But as I was walking home, I spotted her sitting alone on a swing in the playground. Just go, Felix. This girl only brings trouble, I thought to myself. But oh man, she looked so sad. So the next thing I knew, I was walking over and sat on the swing next to her. I asked, why weren't you in French class? Just leave me alone. Stop pretending you care. Look, I took a deep breath, then continued. <sighs> I'm sorry for yelling at you in front of the whole school. That, that wasn't cool. But what you did to me wasn't cool either. Shall we call it even? Layla stayed quiet for a bit, but then she nodded and smiled at me. Well, that wasn't so bad, right? So from then onward, everything was fine between us. She even smiled at me in the hallway. Whenever I saw Layla, this warm feeling came over me, and I couldn't stop grinning. Once, I even spent my entire lunch break trapezing around school just so I could catch a glimpse of her face. Oh boy, I think I've fallen for Layla. But why now? I tried to ignore these feelings, hoping they'd eventually go away. But then Valentine's Day came along and Layla, being the popular girl she is, received enough roses to open a florist. Ugh, how annoying. I needed to do something. So after school, I went to her house with some chocolates and a teddy bear. As soon as she opened the door, I blurted out, I know I'm a big dumb idiot. Rejecting you was a huge mistake. Please, will you be my valentine? I stood there red-faced and prepared for rejection. But she just snatched the gift out of my hands, then said, Yeah, okay then. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. Me, your regular nerdy guy, was dating the most popular girl in school. Love is really unpredictable.
I was amazed at how open she was to my nerdy stuff. She even watched The Mandalorian with me and cooed whenever she saw Baby Yoda. But the one thing that didn't gel so well between us was, yep, you guessed it, studying. Layla didn't seem to care about her grades, and I didn't want her to fail, so I offered to be her tutor. But she was constantly yawning and staring out of the window whenever we started studying. Felix, I have an idea. Why don't you do my homework for me? In the meantime, I can go to cheerleading practice as we have an important contest coming up, and it means the world to me, just like your math quizzes do to you. What? Was she serious? My God, I hated cheating like this. But she gave me that puppy-eyed look, and me being the sucker I am, I agreed. Thanks, Felix. You're the best. She kissed me on the cheek, then immediately passed me a huge pile of homework. I asked her why she had so much, and she explained that because she didn't understand it, she let them pile up. But hold on, why did she have Spanish? She was in French class with me, not Spanish. But she just shrugged and said her parents forced her to study it outside of school. Oh, my poor little pumpkin. One day, like usual, I stopped by her place to pick up her homework, but she wasn't home. That was odd. Today wasn't cheerleading practice, so where could she be? I looked through the stack that she asked her mom to give me and saw some Spanish worksheets. So I said to her mom, Oh, she must be in her Spanish lesson, right? Her mom looked a bit confused and laughed. <laughs> you know Layla. She's far too stubborn to agree to extra classes. Huh? So the papers weren't hers? Then whose it was? And why? Suddenly I felt this uncomfortable feeling itching under my skin. I decided to confront her later at school. Then the next day I was walking through the hallway looking for Layla when I suddenly heard some guys cheering, something about getting an A in Spanish. Wait a minute, did he say Spanish? I turned to see who it was, and to my shock it was Hector, the captain of the soccer team. Hector was popular for being all handsome and everything, but also for sucking at school. Someone must have done his homework for him, and you guessed it, yeah. This someone was me. Ah, it all made sense now. Layla and Hector must be a couple. They may have been hot stuff, but they both sucked at studying. So she was using me to do both of their homework. It all made much more sense now. None of this relationship was real. It was all just an act. And no way was I letting them get away with this. I had a perfect plan to expose them. During lunch, I sat down at the table closest to Hector. Then I went into lovey-dovey overload with Layla. I fed her cheese fries, then I stroked her hair and loudly told her how soft it was. I quickly glanced over at Hector for his reaction, but nothing. He seemed more interested in her burger than her. Layla raised an eyebrow at me. Um, are you okay? You're acting really weird. I laughed loudly, then placed my arms around her, then said, well, um, it was actually more like shouting. Oh, because you're so cute! But huh? Why was there still no reaction from Hector? He and his friends even cheered, and on his way out of the canteen, he gave me a thumbs up. Layla didn't look phased at all either. Man, somebody call the Academy, because these two deserved an Oscar. My plan was a massive fail. Ugh, this was so frustrating. I fell silent and Layla noticed and gave me this quizzing look. Something is definitely off. You're being really strange. Okay, if she wanted to know, then fine. So I blurted out. I know that the Spanish papers belong to Hector. You're together and you're just using me to do all your homework. I'm not stupid, you know. Nice meeting you, but please don't ever talk to me again. Then I left without saying a word. Well, that's the end of my story. A rather sad one, right? I would be lying if I said I wasn't feeling down about it. I truly do love her. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to college in a few months and I'll get to meet a cute, geeky girl who won't trick me into doing some other dude's homework. <sighs> oh, uh, sorry guys, someone's calling me. My God, it's Layla. What does she want? We're done. Stop calling. What? Fine. I promise you'll leave me alone after this? Okay, wait, I'm coming downstairs. Uh, oh my god, Layla's at my front door and she insists to not leave unless I have a talk with her. Ugh, don't move everyone. I'll tell you every detail as soon as I'm back. Jesus, guys, you won't believe what Layla's just told me. The thing is that her cheerleading team had to practice a lot for upcoming contests, which means they couldn't study as much. Therefore, they had to find someone who was willing to do their homework so their grades wouldn't slip. That's when Layla came up with the plan to win me over as her boyfriend. The flirting, the pranks... <laughs> They were all part of her plan. That was the truth. But Layla didn't know about the Spanish worksheets because her teammate Harper gave them to her. Turns out Hector is Harper's boyfriend. Didn't see that coming, right? But I was still super mad at Layla because she still used me. Then Layla took out some papers and showed them to me. Huh? It was homework with all B's on them. Then she told me, Okay, I admit that at first I didn't like you. I only approached you to take advantage of you. But then I actually fell for you as I got to know you better, okay? So I stopped giving you my homework and did it on my own. 
So, her feelings for me were real too? I couldn't believe it. Eventually, I forgave her and now we're happier than ever. I must say, when Layla first talked to me, I thought she was this crazy girl like Harley Quinn who I could never like, but I was wrong. Turns out I'm the one who's crazy about her. So, I guess I have more in common with the Joker than I first thought. <laughs> It was such a beautiful weekend, but instead of being out having fun, I was stuck at home. For what, you ask? To teach Excel to a girl who doesn't even know how to use shift key shortcuts. <sighs> what is the matter with you? I've explained the code 20 times to you already. Um, uh, I... I'm sorry. Let's face it, you suck at this. Try to beat me in your dream. Ugh. If I had to waste one more second sitting next to her, I'd go crazy. Look how fake you are. If you're mad, then just show me. Why do you always have to be misfriendly? Hmm. Let me introduce you. That's Lara, my so-called sister. Two months ago, my mom brought her home and announced, Jeff, I have something to tell you. Back when we broke up for a while, due to your parents' hatred towards me, well... During that time, I found out I was pregnant. I gave birth to our little girl, Laura. I was only 22, and I had no money. So as much as it pained me to do so, I gave her away. I've never stopped thinking about her. And now, well, I've managed to find her. She dabbed at her teary eyes, then handed Dad the DNA test results. Dad was overwhelmed and ran over to hug Laura. They all cried a lot, and hugged a lot. As for me, I just stood there in shocked silence as I watched this family reunion take place. It all happened so fast. How was I supposed to believe that it was just a coincidence when Mom suddenly found her long-lost child after so many years? What now, Skylar? Stop being so headstrong. Mom scolded me then rushed over to Lara and started cuddling her and soothingly stroking her hair. It's not my fault she has the learning capacity of a slug. Stop interfering, else I'll quit teaching her. By the way, those loving mother-daughter things also? Cut it off! It's ridiculous! I know what you're thinking. What's with the attitude towards my mom? The thing is, she's not even my real mom. A few months ago... Something crazy happened to me. A strange woman showed up out of nowhere and claimed she was my mom. Say what now? Of course, I told her she'd got the wrong person. But when I saw the selling contract between my mom and her, I froze in shock. Turns out, my mom miscarried a child, but she was too afraid she'd lose her place in the family. So she bought me from this woman. So I was adopted. It's common right? But still, I don't deserve to be treated like that. I had always been neglected since I was little. Mom never hugged or kissed me. She didn't read me bedtime stories or tuck me into bed at night. All she ever did was snarl at me. Go away! I guess I convinced myself that this was just how Mom was. But then Lara arrived, and Mom is totally different with her. <sighs> I get it now. I get why she treated me so cold and why I've never felt happy despite growing up in a wealthy family. Because I'd never belonged here. After the incident with the woman, I confronted mom about it. I get it. I know I'm not your real daughter. And that's why you think it's acceptable to treat me like garbage? Oh, please. Stop with the dramatics. Let me tell you this. Even if you did adopt me, I'm still going to prove my efficiency to dad and take over this company by myself. Mom was dumbfounded after hearing that. Then, not long after that, she turned up with Lara. That's why I didn't believe there was no coincidence. She brought Lara back to compete with me. And if that was true, then, what do I have to be scared of? <laughs> How are my two girls? Skylar, are you still helping Lara with her studies? Yeah, Dad. She still helps me every day. Thank you so much. Okay, that's great. When you move past the basics, I think you should take a few more extra courses. Do your best, 
and try to follow your sister. There's no way she can be as good as me, not even in her wildest dream. Laura is very smart, and she'll soon be up to speed. I'm also teaching her more about our family business. Huh? Is Mom going to teach her more to compete with me? I can obviously see her greed and competitiveness. But whatever. Laura and I are at two distinctly different levels anyway. I am an excellent student at the Columbia Business School, while she's just an uneducated nobody. Poof! Please! I have absolutely nothing to worry about. Mum kept forcing her to study, but... See? Speaking of Mum, she'd been acting weird lately. One minute she treats me like a stubborn stain she can't get rid of, then the next she's trying to set me up with some guy named Dean. He's the son of her super rich colleague. I don't understand why she suddenly feels the need to find me a boyfriend. And dad wasn't helping the situation, as instead of telling mom to stop playing matchmaker, he was encouraging her. Ugh. Okay, I just wanted them to quit bugging me. So in the end, I agreed to talk to this Dean guy. But now, he won't stop messaging me, and he's even shown up at the house. Hmm, I suppose he is kind of handsome and nice, but he's not my type. So I just talked to him out of politeness. Until one time, I saw Lara sneaking a peek at Dean while he was waiting for me in the lobby. Wait, don't tell me she likes Dean? Oh well, she's welcome to my leftovers. I don't like this guy anyway. Then one day, I was walking along the corridor when I received a text from Dean. Skylar, are you free tomorrow? Let's have dinner together. I was about to text back when I suddenly heard Mom and Lara arguing. What's wrong with you, Lara? Why are you secretly dating that jerk? Why not, Dean? He's a good guy. Besides, he told me that there's nothing going on between him and Skylar. So Dean is two-timing us? He snuck out on a date with Lara while flirting with me on the phone all day? What on earth? I tried to keep calm while continuing to listen. You're crazy. Stop this stupid secret dating game at once. What? Why is Mum insisting he's a good guy to me, but telling Lara the opposite? Well, Mum, which one is it? Is Dean a good match like you told me, or a jerk like you told Lara? He's... He's rich, so keep on dating him and stop bothering me with your nonsense. Ugh, I wasn't born yesterday. There's definitely something wrong with this Dean. The very next day, I decided to go and follow Dean. Oh my gosh, what was he wearing? And why did he go to this slum? Then he gathered with a few other thugs. So it's obvious, Dean definitely was a street guy. That's why Mum didn't let Lara get close to him. But why did she match him with me? Could that be a part of her plan to bring me down? Ha! Huh. Nice try! <laughs> I'd had enough spying for one day, so I was about to leave. But then suddenly, I heard a familiar voice which startled me. I turned around, then... What? It's... Mum? How dare you ruin the plan! Mind your words. I did as you said. I told you to flirt with Skylar to distract her, not Laura. Don't think I'm paying you a nickel more. Fine, don't pay me. Just be sure to take me a picture of your husband's face when the real DNA result arrives in his inbox. <laughs> you, you, you! Oh. My. God. Did I just hear it wrong? What DNA results? Could it be? I immediately went home and rushed into my dad's office to look for the DNA certificate that my mom gave him that day. Here it was! What should I do now? That's right, I had to take it to the hospital to have it checked. After pleading and putting pressure on the doctor, he finally admitted that he'd accepted a bribe from... Dean! To fake the test result! I asked for the original one and... Believe it or not, Lara was not my dad's child. I immediately rushed home and showed my dad the original DNA results. He was so shocked, I had to help him sit down, then get him a glass of water. When he got over the initial shock, 
He asked me to call Lara and Mum in to confront them. But, oh no, Lara's room was empty. Only one letter was lying on the bed. Sorry, everyone. Dean told me the truth. Thank you all for taking care of me. Especially you, Skylar. I honestly enjoyed being around you. I think you're kind and patient. Please don't ever change. I don't belong in your world, so I can't stay. If we're predestined, we will meet again. Thank you, and sorry again. Love, Lara. Unbelievable! How could you lie to all of us about something like this? Knowing she couldn't wriggle out of this one, Mum replied, Okay, Lara isn't yours. I fell pregnant with her after we broke up. I didn't want you to throw me out, so I paid Dean to get a fake DNA certificate. Then I paid him again to date Skylar and distract her from her studies. This business should be Laura's, not hers. But that jerk went and fell for Laura instead. Poor Dad. He looked so heartbroken. Mom tried pleading with him to forgive her, but he told her the trust was broken and that she had to leave. Everything's such a mess. Poor Dad shut himself away in his office, while me, I lay on my bed, staring at the ceiling. I couldn't stop thinking about all of Mum's lies. And what for? Money? Fame? Status? Are all those things worth sacrificing dignity, honor, and trust for? I used to want to compete with Lara, too. But now, it turns out that all of that was just fleeting. Dad, I think I should leave, too. Because I'm not your biological daughter, either. You... 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 I've known for a while, but I've kept quiet as I was afraid that you would abandon me. Thank you for always being there for me. You're a good man, and you don't deserve all the pain you've been through. Then I told my dad all about how I found out I was adopted, and how my mom paid my real mom to hand me over. Dad froze for a few seconds, then calmly said, Skylar, honey, you'll always be my daughter, and I couldn't be prouder of you. Please. Stay here with me. I couldn't hold back my tears. Did Dad really want me around? Even after all this crazy stuff? I really love my dad, but I couldn't upset him anymore. The next day, Dad and I went around to Lara's adoptive mom's house. I cleared the air with her and invited her to come back with us. She politely declined. Turns out she just wants a simple life. We still meet up sometimes, and we've actually become pretty good friends. Isn't it amazing? Because before that, we were like water and fire. The fact that I don't have to teach her Excel anymore probably helps. <laughs> <sighs> there are those who do whatever they can to win fame and fortune, but this often comes at a cost. Mum let greed turn her into a monster, and now she's paying for it. I don't like what she did, but she's still my mum. Well, my adoptive mum anyway. So... I still send her subsidies and wish her happiness for the rest of her life. The truth is that I'd rather forego a huge fortune and live a quiet life than become someone I don't want to be. If it were you, would you do the same to live in peace? this fence have to be so high? Oh no, that didn't sound good. It was time to get out of here. But, ah! I seem to be stuck. Suddenly, a security team was blinding me with a flashlight and telling me not to move. Not that I could anyway. <sighs> they dragged me down. Then the next thing I knew, I was being pushed into a chair and interrogated by security guards. But all they got out of me was silence. A few minutes later, Mr. and Mrs. Langston showed up. Yeah, they're the wealthy couple who owns this mansion. They're the people that I was looking for. I suppose I did owe them an explanation. I'm sorry for this disturbance, but it's not what you think. I saw your job advert for a housemaid, and I wanted to apply. But the guard said I was too young and refused to let me in. The thing is... My dad has a rare heart condition, and if he doesn't receive treatment soon, 
then chances are he won't make it. I really don't have any other choice. So please can I have the job and also six months salary advance? Right at that moment, a girl my age fell into the room, peered at the Langstons, then started laughing. Carla, this is not acceptable. Aren't you ashamed of your appalling results for the Francis Academy entrance exam? You should be studying hard to redeem yourself, not out partying at this hour. This Carla girl just rolled her eyes at them, then wobbly walked off. I noticed Mr. Langston comforting his wife, who seemed to be in much distress at the girl's inconsiderate behaviors. So this must be their daughter then. They sure seem to take her education seriously. And she applied to my school. Hmm. That gave me an idea. You know, if you want to improve Carla's academic performance, I can help you. They both gave me skeptical looks, so I showed them my academic records and told them how I was a valedictorian and had successfully scored a scholarship at Francis Academy. On hearing about my achievements, any apprehensions they had soon faded. And so, they'd come up with a plan. A risky one. They would pay for my dad's hospital fees until he fully recuperated if I took on the identity of Carla and flew to South Korea to study at an international high school there, while Carla would take my place and enroll at Francis Academy just as they wished. This deal sounded like the answer to my prayers, but I knew it would be tricky. Pretending to be somebody else in a completely different country was beyond my understanding, so I agreed to do it, but only on two more conditions. First, a guardian must be present, who would take care of all my paperwork and stuff. Second, after I completed the deal and returned, the Langstons had to help me get into my dream school, the prestigious GBA University, obviously. They gave it a thought, then shook my hand in agreement. It looked like we had a deal! The next thing I knew, I was in an elite neighborhood in Seoul, Korea. Whoa! Talk about luxury! So this was what it felt like to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Mr. Preston dropped me off at school and repeatedly told me not to draw attention to myself. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, Mr. Preston is the Langston's lawyer, and according to the contract, he's also my guardian. He seems oh so serious, but I guess he's okay. Whoa, this school looked so modern, the architecture was a work of art all in itself. I wandered around the endless corridors and tried to find my class. Everyone seemed quite friendly, and the class president, Minjun, even gave me a guided tour. All the students' outstanding paintings, photos, and models were displayed all across the campus. Countless classrooms of different subjects, from science to art, just made me gasp in awe. I was admiring the artwork, when suddenly Minjin blurted out, Sorry, I've got to go. Miss Lee is looking for me. It'll only take a few minutes, so wait here for me, okay? Then he rushed off. So I lingered around the hall. That's when I spotted a group of girls nearby. I recognized the one from my last class. I'm sure her name was Isabella. I was about to walk over to greet them when I realized they had this one girl cornered and were making fun of her hairband. Ugh! Where did you get that horrid thing from? I suppose it must have come from some thrift shop or something. I heard that's where poor people shop. <laughs> Ugh, this whole thing disgusted me. They outcasted someone just because she didn't come from ridiculously rich households like them. Ugh, I knew that poor girl's feeling all too well. I gotta help her. But I didn't want to get anyone's back up and draw attention to myself. Hmm, what could I do? Ah! Got it! Hey, the teacher's coming. I'll stall her for you guys. Run! My plan worked a treat. As Isabella and her friends nodded at me, then rushed off. I then went over to the girl asking if she was okay. Get away from me! She flinched me off her and then ran off. Huh? I was only trying to help. As I turned around, I saw Minjin looking at me. A bit impressed, I think. He told me that the students here were divided into two groups. 90% are rich, 
and the remaining 10% are poor kids entering under scholarships. Most of the students are quite friendly to each other. Well, except those I just witnessed. Isabelle is part of the rich kid group who think their upbringings make them superior to others. She's often mean to the 10% group as she believes they don't deserve to be here. And as you can guess, that girl they upset? She's called Susie. She's in the 10% group, and she's the smartest student in our year. What nonsense! School is school! We're here to study and should all be treated equally. Too right, new girl. I knew there was something different about you. The next day, when class was over, Isabella tapped on my shoulder and thanked me for the warning. Then she asked me to join her group for lunch. I was about to politely refuse when Minjin appeared and asked me to join him. Phew. Thanks to Minjin, I had an excuse to quickly flee the scene. However, I did look back and see that Isabella was giving this offended look. After that, Minjin and I started hanging out more. We soon became close friends, and we both decided that the dynamics around here needed to change. So, we set out to help the 10% club. One lunchtime, Isabella and her clan purposely bumped into this boy, causing him to spill food all over himself. While they laughed and pointed at him, I rushed over there, took the food, and slammed it onto Minjin's face. Minjin immediately understood my intention. Then he also took a handful of noodles and smeared it all over Isabella. Cue the canteen erupting into one big, messy food fight. <laughs> Another time, the school was preparing for a cultural fair. One boy from the 10% group had this awesome idea to open a food stall serving traditional dishes from different countries. Everyone agreed, apart from, yep, you guessed it, Isabella and her snooty besties. Such a peasant. Too used to working as a waiter to serve others, huh? I winked at Minjin. Then we stayed behind and secretly wrote Isabella and her friends' names on the list of participants and submitted it to the teacher. Now, they had no choice but to serve food at the super crowded fair. The funniest part was they finally got a taste of their own medicine when the 10% group made the most of ordering them around and complaining. Ew, this ratatouille is too bland. Add some more salt. And this milk tea is too sweet. Start a new batch with less sugar. I have to admit, I was enjoying watching the mean kids squirm. But I guess my enjoyment hadn't gone unnoticed. As afterward, Isabella approached me. Those peasant kids aren't at the same level as you and I. I suggest you put more care into who you choose to associate with. Or you could end up being treated like they are. Whatever. I just rolled my eyes, walked away from her, then continued to hang out with my friends in the 10% group. Isabella and her minions gave me dirty looks, but due to the Langston's name and fortune, that's all they could do. Just like that, my high school years passed by. I had some great friends. And guess what? Yep, I was now dating Minjin. I loved being here in South Korea, and I'd even grown fond of Preston who despite being a grumpy gut, now felt like family to me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I missed my family back home like crazy. But dad was getting better now, and we regularly FaceTimed. As amazing as my life was now, deep down I always felt like I was living in a dream. None of this truly belonged to me, and everything would be over as soon as I left this place. And eventually, my last week here arrived. As I was studying for my last ever exam, the SAT, I received a message from an unknown number. I know your secret. Drop out of the test, else I'll expose you. What? Who could it be? I called the number and a distorted voice answered the phone. I begged them to tell me why they were doing this, but they just replied, You don't need to know. Just do as I said. Then they hung up. Luckily for me, Preston isn't just an amazing lawyer, he's also a tech genius. Thanks to him, we tracked down the location of the phone. Hmm, I bet you're just as curious as I am to find out who it was. And now is the moment of truth. Huh? No way! Standing there looking startled was... Susie! Why would she do this to me? It made no sense. I mean, 
I know we weren't friends, but I had nothing against her. Why did she despise me to the point of willing to ruin my life like this? Please let me explain. Ever since you arrived here, I lost my top spot at school, which means I've also lost a full scholarship to college. My family will never be able to afford it themselves, so I decided to investigate you. And that's when I found out that you were not the real Carla Langston, and you got paid by her parents to achieve all these academic records for her. I get why you're upset, but you didn't have to blackmail me. You don't strike me as someone who would do such a thing, so it's kind of disappointing that you did. I'm not. I... I'm a dead end, Irene. You have to understand. This is my entire future I'm losing here. And what for? So some rich, spoiled girl can get into college without doing any of the work? <sighs> it seemed like I had a lot of thinking to do. In the end, I realized all I felt towards Susie was pity. This was all my fault, and it wasn't fair for someone as capable as Susie to have her entire future ruined because of me. So, I had to be the bigger person here. I decided to ask the Langstons to give Susie the spot at GBA University, which was previously reserved for me as part of the deal. I mean, no worries. With this big brain, I could easily get in there on my own, right? And so, as soon as I was done with the test, I quietly left South Korea behind, without saying goodbye to anyone, including Minjin. Susie and I boarded the same flight back to the state. She couldn't help but thank me all the way there. And, well, let's just say, by the time the plane landed, we became good friends. But things didn't all go as swimmingly as I intended. It turned out Carla was even more negligent than first thought. All she managed to get was a high school diploma with shockingly bad grades. These were now my bad grades. My dream of attending a prestigious university was over. <sighs> I just have to make do with a community college instead. A year flew by, and there wasn't a single day that I didn't think about South Korea or Minjin. I couldn't talk to him anymore. I promised the Langstons I'd cut all ties with my life there. I mean, Susie was the exception. One day while going out with Susie, she was showing me something interesting on Facebook. When we happened to scroll past a post of Minjin's, which read, Finally I found you the love of my life. My heart sank. Wow, it looked like he'd found someone else, while my heart still pined for him. <sighs> but life still goes on, and a week after that, I was waiting for Susie outside of her college, daydreaming how this could have been my life. I saw a familiar face heading towards me. Was that... Minjin? But wait! He was with a girl... Carla! Hang on, his Facebook post was about her? The love of his life was Carla? I couldn't do this right now, so I willed back tears as I took a deep breath and turned to walk away. But suddenly, I felt a hand pull me back. It was Minjin. It's really you! I finally found you! I've been looking ever since graduation, and then my information led me here and to... Me! Carla appeared next to him and smirked at me. Hey, who am I to stop the course of true love? So I told him your real name and helped him search for you. I mean, you're smart, so I figured you'd attend this university too. No, you messed up my grades, remember? Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. I turned and looked at Minjin. I'm so sorry, Minjin. I wanted to tell you everything, but I couldn't. He took my hand in his and gave me this adoring smile. I found you. And trust me, right now, that's all that matters. Hey, I'm Connor, and I'm currently taking a well-deserved break from studying to hang out with my friends. I go to college at the Georgia Institute of Tech, and I'm sure to be a top-notch architect one day soon. Now I just have one thing to deal with, then I can properly enjoy my night off. Oh, here she is. Connor, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to hurt you, but sorry. We should stop seeing each other. Ah, well, every ending is a new beginning. <laughs> Cheers. 
I was the master of getting girlfriends I'm tired of to break up with me. It was great. As this way, no one could ever accuse me of being a bad boy. (sighs) What to do now? I reluctantly had to find a new challenge then. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to turn this in. Um, that's okay. Just trying to find one more paper. Uh, um, what's your name? (laughs) I'm Connor. Hi. Hmm, her sparkling eyes, her shiny hair, her soft hands. But ugh, why was suddenly some nerd dragging me away from the hot girl and into a corner? Before I could ask him what was going on, he started waving a photo of this girl in my face. So it turns out this dude is called Patrick, and the girl in the photo is Paige, his girlfriend. Their parents are both influential sorts and organize their whole engagement. Sounds great, right? I mean, she's pretty cute. But no, he wanted me to find a way to make Paige break up with them. I've heard a lot about you. I need your help. I can't do this myself. (laughs) Huh? Sure, I get it. A real man will never be the one to break up first. I might be able to help, but first, let's see what kind of person she is. The conversation started to become super serious. From the sound of it, this page girl was a genuine, good-natured girl with a vulnerable side. So this needed to be handled with extra care, so that there wouldn't be any awkward family provocations for my clients. Hmm, perhaps... Nah, this way wouldn't work. Neither would that way. I was about to give up when suddenly Patrick stacked a pack of money, approximately $1,000, on the table. Help me, then it's all yours. Whoa, that was a lot of money to me. It would get me the magnificent PS5 of my dreams. (sighs) Besides, with my charm and handsome looks, I could make Paige fall in love with me and leave Patrick in no time. Genius! My debut had to be spectacular. So I looked online and hired some people pretending to be thugs to block Paige's path. Then I'd waltz in and rescue her. The plan was all set, so I leisurely walked to the rendezvous spot, but... Oh no! Who knew those guys were real thugs? They threatened us, asked us to hand over all our belongings, then forced us to go to some abandoned warehouse. Oh my god! The $1,000 was so not worth losing my life for. Yes, I was somewhat afraid, but my flirtatious instinct kicked in. And I turned to Paige and started talking to her. Oh man, she's super sweet. And I noticed that when she talks about something that interests her, she crinkles her nose. She's so cute, but most of all, she's really smart. Why, you ask? Because just an hour later, the cops showed up and arrested the thugs. Turns out, before Paige handed over her belongings, she quickly texted the thug's license plate to a friend and asked her to call the cops. Phew! And luckily for me, thanks to this destiny meeting, I got a little more information about her and learned that Paige was planning to learn Spanish to major in tourism there. But there's one more important thing. That is, I think, I have a crush on her. She's not like any other girl I've met before. I want to win her heart, truly, not just because of the plan. It will be the best of both worlds. Patrick gets to be free of Paige, as requested. But she won't end up a lovelorn girl because she'll have a new handsome boyfriend by her side. Yep, that'll be me. (laughs) There was just one problem. In all the commotion of the day, I'd forgotten to ask Paige for her number. Oops. I had asked Patrick for it and then texted her, but sadly didn't receive a response. Hmm. I needed to be smart about this. So I decided to pretend to be a Spanish tutor. Yeah. I can't speak Spanish, but with my charm, that's no big deal, right? I created a flashy profile and told Patrick to pretend to surf and accidentally find me. Then show Paige. And so, ding. Hola, yo soy Professor Connor. But wait, sheesh! If only I'd studied Spanish harder in high school. And now the extent of my Spanish were just a few words I'd picked up from binge-watching Money Heist. So I just copied down Spanish lessons off YouTube and taught these to Paige. I don't know if it's because of my teaching skills or my charisma, but Paige seemed to think I was legit. (laughs) However, my flirting tricks weren't going so well. I knew she liked me. I mean, who wouldn't like me? Besides, she gave me these cute looks and laughed at my jokes. Our chemistry was undeniable. So when I reached over and placed my hand on top of hers, I felt sparks fly. But then she gave me this awkward look and moved her hand away. She liked me, right? So why was she acting like this? I never failed at flirting. Feeling frustrated, I was trudging my way up the street when, huh? Was that Patrick happily holding hands with a girl? I recognized the long hair. It was Paige. Ugh, why can't she drop her lousy boyfriend already? And why won't she date me instead? I was about to leave, but the more I thought about it, the more resentful I became. So I bribed a little boy to run up to Paige and say, 
Why aren't you with Connor, you cheater? Mean, huh? But haha, <laughs> Patrick would be pleased as he now had a legitimate excuse to break up with her anyway. But when the girl turned around, I realized that she wasn't Paige. The poor girl looked completely dumbfounded. Patrick started yelling at her and pulling on her arm so hard she almost fell over. Huh? Where's the nerd Patrick? And that wasn't cool at all. Then he raised his hand to hit her, but I zoomed in front of him. Stop! No reason to hit a woman, bro! Patrick immediately grabbed my collar. You dare play tricks with my Becky, huh? Seeing that, the shocked girl quickly ran away. No, no, I thought it was Paige, so I hired the boy just to give you an excuse to break up with her. Calm down, bro. Patrick reassessed the situation, then he cleared his throat and said, Oh, well, uh, I was bored of Becky anyway, thanks. I was still shocked by this jerky side of Patrick when he immediately said, uh, By the way, you can stop the plan with Paige. I decided I like her now. Lately, she's been so full of life and less clingy. He told me he would still pay me, then he hopped into a taxi. Ugh, that's the version of Paige when she's with me. I gave her that zest of life, you jerk. Whatever. From this day forth, he was no longer my client, and I didn't want his stupid money. <sighs> it was time I told Paige what Patrick was really like, so I arranged to meet her in a cafe and told her everything. But when she got over the initial shock, she snapped at me. I know this is all part of your twisted fabrication. I mean, you lied about speaking Spanish, and now you're just making up stories to break Patrick and me up. Then she threw my textbook back at me and stormed off. Oh man, that Patrick is such a slimeball. But I couldn't blame her for believing him over me. I'd seen firsthand how much of a wolf in sheep's clothing he was. I tried to find proof to show Paige, but that jerk sure covered his tracks. His whole nerdy bookworm facade was flawless. And he was still this sluggish nerd, wobbly clutching the bus handle to go to school every day. Ugh, what a con man. Just you wait, Patrick. It's time the world saw your true face. With such determination, I continued to spy on him around town. Then one time, like every other day, I was on duty when a group stopped me, accompanied by Patrick pointing at me. Here's our sandbag! Uh-oh, looks like I was busted. The whole group gathered around me, fists ready. Yeah, I was pretty terrified. There's no way I could fight off a group this size. I raised my fists and prepared for pain, but then someone shouted, Stop! It was Paige. Suddenly, Patrick immediately changed his attitude and ordered the group to leave. He told Paige that I stole his stuff and his friends were helping him get it back. What? The swine! Connor isn't a thief, I know it for sure. There must be some misunderstanding. Please don't accuse him like that. Patrick's face changed. He grabbed Paige's hand and pulled her away, saying, We're getting engaged at the end of this month. Say no more. Okay, so I may have gate-crashed their engagement party, but I did hide at the back while the speeches were going on. Then to my surprise, as Patrick was talking, they both spotted me. Then Paige turned to him and shook her head. It hurt to see her like this. Perhaps she changed her mind. What do you mean? Is this because of Connor? Paige kept quiet while Patrick's parents were furious. How dare you cheat on my son? Who do you think you are? Paige, why is this happening? Really, Paige, say something. Feeling the pressure and injustice of it all, poor Paige looked distraught as she desperately tried to hold back her tears. I really couldn't stand seeing her like that, so I jumped out of the crowd to come to her defense. Everyone calm down. Paige is the sweetest, most amazing girl, and she deserves better than this jerk. Don't listen to him. He's a thief and a fiancé stealer. I was done listening to this guy's slander. So I threw a punch straight at his smug face. Yeah, the engagement party had sure turned chaotic. I looked at the wreckage in front of me. The consequences that I had caused. Okay, so maybe coming here wasn't my best idea. Actually, this was all my fault for ever agreeing to help Patrick in the first place. Or I shouldn't have been a jerk in the first place. Feeling deflated, I arrived home and saw that I'd received a message from Paige. My heart thudded as I opened it. Thank you for everything and try to practice your Spanish as it's even worse than mine. Goodbye. And that was the last text she sent me. After that, I spent a month trying to contact her but received no reply. So finally, I plucked up my courage to go to Paige's house and was told that she'd left for Spain earlier than scheduled. Perhaps the shock was so huge that Paige wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. It was all my fault. I was the biggest jerk in this story and now I'd lost the girl. Alas, vengeance is bliss. So I walked inside, went straight to Patrick's table where he was wasted in the arms of a bunch of girls, took a picture and sent it to his family. What is done by night appears by day, my friend. A few days later I heard that after being exposed, 
Patrick's parents had confiscated all of his bank cards. Even his current girlfriend dumped him. Ha! So that sealed the final breakup deal for my special guest. And now, guess where I'm at? Looking for the girl of my life, duh. And this time, I'm going to make sure I don't screw it up. It took a lot of effort, but I finally got into the military school that I've always dreamed of. I'm now one step closer to being an actual soldier. Ah! <laughs> hey, midget. Move it. You're blocking my way. What? How dare he? This rude guy deserved a lesson. Suddenly, a hand grabbed my fist. I looked up. Oh, it was some tough-looking guy with tanned skin and bright eyes. He picked up my backpack and said, First, you have to know your enemy. He's Eric. Before I could reply to this boy, he walked off. At that moment, the siren sounded, and I quickly got in line. Choose your groups. You have one minute. Looking around, I saw two guys looking as awkward as I did. So I shuffled over to them, and we became a group. Oh, but wait. Why did that guy who picked up my backpack team up with that obnoxious jerk Eric? It turned out our groups would be our roommates, and we were placed in room P02, which was right opposite Eric's room. My roomies are Tom, who was forced here due to his family's military background, and Henry, a notorious playboy who was sent here by his father to stop his opulent ways and learn how to lead a disciplined life. What about me? Well, I'm a girl. My disguise is awesome, right? You see, I have a twin brother, Jack. So I took his identity, and voila, here I am. Ever since I was a little kid, I've loved martial arts and always dreamed of one day becoming a soldier. I thought life here would be great, but it certainly had its challenges. Every morning, whatever the weather, we have to wake up at 5 a.m. and run around the yard. The showers were ice cold, and worse still, because I'm a girl, I had to sneak into the freezing shower block in the dead of night when no one was around. And physical education here is surely rough. Although I train a lot, I'm still always ranked at the bottom. I also struggle to finish the massive meal portions here. Not only do we have to work out loads, but our chores are also endless. Cooking, gardening, ironing, helping out with constructions. I was a novice at these things, so I was super clumsy and messed them up. Luckily, I always had Tom and Henry on my side. Tom is a nerd. And although he doesn't like studying here, his grades are top of the class, and he gives me the answers to the questions I don't know. As for Henry, he gets top grades in PE class. And even though he teases me a lot, he's the one who protects me from Eric. Speaking of Eric, he's a jerk who teases weaker students in school. But he gets away with it for one simple reason. His dad's in charge. And as for that boy that warned me on my first day, yeah. Turns out he's called Ellis. I can't quite work him out, even though he often hangs out with Eric and participates in his meaningless dumb pranks. One time, after Eric knocked a younger kid over, I saw Ellis go back and check he was okay. Hmm. Friend or foe? Who knows? Today we have Taekwondo class. Perfect. I quickly challenged a smug-looking Eric. Too bad he doesn't know I have a black belt. Ha! <laughs> and as I predicted... I kicked his button just three moves. K.O. I walked over to my two fellows with a big triumphant smile on my face when Henry suddenly rushed forward and pushed Eric down. Turns out he was sneaking up on me from behind. Nice try, coward. But sorry, dude. We three always have each other's back. We were laughing about Eric's defeat when the lunch bell went. But, oh no. The room was locked from the outside. Eric has to be behind this. No worries. The food here sucks anyway, Tom said while pulling a bunch of food out from under his bed. <laughs> Again, Tom? You've already been punished twice this week for sneaking food in here. Suddenly there were noises outside. I went closer to the door to listen when it burst open and in stepped an officer. I stepped into the corridor to see everybody was gathered around whispering. While Eric was on the ground looking pale like he'd just seen a ghost. Oh my god. The door of room P01, Eric's room, 
had weird scratches all over it. It looks like those scratches spell out a word. Jacob. So there's a monster named Jacob. Well, that's comforting. P02! You all missed lunch, so I want five laps around the yard. And also five points are deducted for bringing in outside food. Ugh. Points deducted again? At this rate, we'd never gain access to the entertainment room. Oh, here we keep scores between rooms. Just like in Harry Potter with the house's points. It's quite a competition. At the end of the week, the room with the highest score gets access to the entertainment room. You know, watching TV or using social media are considered a huge reward in the strict school. But it's hard to earn points. Meanwhile, you can get them deducted for any reason. From me taking a shower at the wrong time, to Henry skipping theory lessons, and now Tom and his snacks. Ugh! What does Jacob mean? Anyway, seeing Eric freak out like that was hilarious. Jacob is a name. Don't you see that, Jack? He's Eric's ex-roommate. I heard that he's missing. Hey, Tom. Is there anything you don't know? Hmm. I see. But why did that missing Jacob scare Eric so much? We're never going to get into the entertainment room. It's all work, work, work in this place. Who cares about that stupid room? This weekend, there's a prom at the local girls' school. I have a step-by-step -step plan for us. We'll sneak into the school milk delivery truck to get there. Then I can finally talk to some lovely girls instead of those aunties in the kitchen. That sounds good. Hey, maybe you'll even find your first love there. Right, Jack? Huh. They had no idea. Anyway, the thought of getting out of school for a bit was appealing. That weekend, Henry stole some of the gardener's casual clothes, and then we hid in the milk delivery truck to attend the prom. As soon as we got there, Henry had already got himself all smitten with a cute blonde, while Tom spent all his time debating World War II with a girl majoring in world history. As for me, I really enjoyed all those tasty cupcakes. But why wouldn't the girls quit pestering me? I guess it proves that I look quite manly, right? We gotta go. The bus to our school is about to come. Change to your uniform. You have one minute. I quickly got changed, then ran after them so fast. I bumped into someone, and we both fell to the ground. I was in such a rush that I could only say sorry, pick up my dog tag, and run out into the road to catch the bus back to school. Where did you guys just get back from? They just helped clean up the cafeteria, sir. I just got back from there. Hearing this, the officer stopped questioning us. But, huh? Why did Ellis help us? Isn't he meant to be on Eric's side? While indulging in thoughts about it, I took out the dog tag from my pocket and was about to put it around my neck. But wait, it's not mine. Look, guys, this dog tag has the name Jacob on it. I quickly showed them the dog tag and explained the incident to them. I must have picked up that guy's tag by mistake. Could it belong to the missing Jacob? Or was it merely coincidence? I mean, Jacob's a popular name, right? The next day, as we were helping to distribute food in the kitchen, there were noises coming from the dining area. As soon as I went out, I saw Eric sitting on the floor, shivering in fear. Next to him was his bowl of soup splattered everywhere. At first, I thought he was playing some tricks to get us to clean up. But no, looking at the way he ran out of the cafeteria in panic, something must have happened. I bent down to pick up the bowl, oh my god, and it was a dog tag with Jacob's name on it. But the dog tag I took by mistake yesterday is still in my pocket. Hmm, what's going on? Eric was so preoccupied with the Jacob stuff, he didn't have time to taunt us, so our room got the highest score for the first time which means we would finally get to experience the entertainment room. But as soon as we reached the lobby of the utility area, something didn't feel right. A bunch of kids were buzzing in front of the entertainment room where the hazy smoke was coming from. Thinking there was a fire, we rushed to put it out. But no, it was only a smoke bomb. Inside the entertainment room, Eric and his friends were fainting. People splashed water on his face, but as soon as he woke up and saw the words Jacob burned black on the wall, he blacked out again. Huh? Who did this? Was it Jacob? Was he not missing after all? Today we have P.E., but I'm on my period, so I made up an excuse to go to the school's infirmary instead. 
On the way, I happened to see Eric with his group of friends. I think Jacob's spirit is back to take revenge on me. You know that time? I locked him in the old warehouse and he just disappeared without a trace since then. Is it possible that he was- Stop talking nonsense. Maybe someone who knows what happened in the past wants to mess with you. I even took his clothes away. Oh god, he would surely want to haunt me. Oh my gosh, it all made sense now. Suddenly a large hand muffled me, then dragged me away. You better shut your mouth and keep this a secret. It was Ellis, Eric's sidekick. What a faithful servant. What if I don't? Especially since I met Jacob. What did you just say? You don't believe it? Here, I bumped into someone, and he dropped this dog tag. As for the one in Eric's soup bowl, I think it's just a fake. Ellis trembled as he took the tag from my hand and quickly left. Was he going to snitch on Eric or something? That night, while I was having dinner, Eric was back to jerk mode again, and he dumped his leftovers on my tray. The two sides clashed, and we all ended up with an hour's detention. The punishment sucked. They locked each of us in a tiny room containing one chair and left us to think about our wrongdoings for a whole hour. The next morning, the officer knocking on the door woke us up. Eric was missing, and we were the number one suspects. This was ridiculous. What did his disappearance have to do with us? I told Henry and Tom about the other day when I overheard Eric and his friends. So Eric teased Jacob, so now he'd returned for vengeance? Feeling suspicious, we snuck into the school's abandoned warehouse. Yep. There was Eric all tied up and with a rag in his mouth. It's Jacob. His spirit has returned. He wants to harm me. Help me. Huh. Look at that arrogant Eric being all scaredy cat. Call me Captain. Uh, no. Call me Farther. Then I'll let you go. Tom and Henry burst out laughing. But Eric just stammered and then everything started to go blurry. Then I must have blacked out. When the three of us groggily came round, we saw that the only thing left there of Eric's was his uniform. As soon as we got back to school, we heard from the others about how Eric had appeared in just his tidy whitey. Everyone gloated to see the overbearing Eric lose his face. From now on, he wouldn't dare tease anyone again. But this was the exact same way Eric used to pick on Jacob. So, Jacob did this? Was he back? Actually. I already knew who was behind all this. You dropped this at the warehouse, right? Ellis looked at me surprised and asked how I knew. We actually snuck into the main office to find information about Jacob before we got to the warehouse. And as soon as I saw his picture, I knew right away there was some sort of close connection between Ellis and Jacob. Call it twin senses. It turns out that Jacob was Ellis's brother. During his time at this school, Eric made his life a misery, but everything was kept a secret because Eric's the principal's son. So, Ellis enrolled at this school to get answers. Ellis took the dog tag back and handed over a picture of me with my twin brother. And this must be yours. I picked it up on the first day of school when you dropped your backpack. You remember? Oh my god. Was this for real? I snatched the photo and quickly put it away when I saw an officer approaching. We should get to know each other better, right? Since we both know each other's secrets. Whatever. Anyway, I don't hate Ellis. And Eric deserved it, so it didn't matter who did that. I turned my head to look at Ellis. He smiled as if he was challenging me. Uh-oh. I had a feeling my life here was about to take a turbulent turn. What a beautiful day! Guess who just landed the lead role in the musical club's next play? Yep, me! As I immersed myself in the rhythm of the music... Ouch! I bumped into someone and fell over. Uh, are you blind? You think you're so special you can just waltz around the places you please? Not again. Why do I keep running into her? That's Kiera, the mean girl from my musical club. 
I sing, she dances, I always make sure to stay in my lane, but for some reason, Kiera won't stop criticizing me. Ugh, please, you sound like a screeching cat. Give me fingernails on a chalkboard over your squawking any day. Why is she gotta be so mean? Huh? What's this? Oh, a wallet. Someone must have dropped it. But I'm the only person in this alley. There must be an ID card or something in it, right? So I opened the wallet to check it, but nope. No student card, no ID. Instead, there's just a strange photo and a bunch of VIP membership cards with the name Sophia on them. Ooh, these places are swanky. This person must be super wealthy. I gotta hand this into the cop station. But wait, isn't this... Oh my god, a ticket to see Franz Ferdinand tonight! I love that band! And it's for the VIP area! Hmm, even if I bring this to the cops now, they still won't be able to find the owner before the concert anyway. We shouldn't let such an awesome ticket go to waste, right? So, what if... I'll enjoy tonight's concert on this girl's behalf, then I'll hand the wallet to the cops later. Honest! Wow, this is the biggest stage I've ever seen in my life! I got to my seat and eagerly waited for the show to start when I heard a voice next to me. Hey, you must be Sophia. My gosh, this guy was gorgeous! But he'd mistaken me for someone else. Wait a minute. That's right, Sophia was the name on the cards, the wallet's owner. I was still looking for a way to explain this awkward situation when he continued, Glad to meet you. I'm Roman, and I've heard a lot about you from my parents. They're kind of good at arranging things, aren't they? Because I really admire this band. I should have foreseen this happening. I mean, who goes to a concert alone? Luckily for me, it appears that this Roman guy had never met the real Sophia before. For one night only, I could pretend to be her, right? And guess what? The guy was not only super cute, but also a talented musician. He'd spent most of his life in Italy and had not long returned to the US to attend college here. Through him, I learned that Sophia was a gifted singer and both their parents set this meeting up so that Roman could help her singing career. Talking to Roman felt so natural and soon I was singing and swaying to the music alongside him. As soon as I arrived home, I immediately went online to find more information about Roman. Wow. His SoundCloud account has over 200,000 subscribers! <sighs> Handsome and talented, he's like a James Dean of modern times. As I was daydreaming, my phone vibrated. He texted me. I had a great time tonight. I'm having a small welcome home party at the Madison Club. I heard you go there often. If you're not busy, would you like to join us? The Madison Club? As in, one of the most expensive country clubs in the state? The initiation fee alone costs a thousand dollars, and this girl is a frequent flyer? And, yup, here's the Madison Club VIP membership card. I know, I know. But I still had loads of music-related questions to ask Roman. Just this once. Then I would definitely hand it in. Now, on to the next problem. I couldn't wear these mediocre outfits to the Madison Club. I needed something demure, but expensive-looking. Hmm, if I was Sophia, where would I shop? Yes, the Crystal Lane Mall. The next morning, I strolled up to the exclusive shopping mall with all of my savings. But how can a dress this short cost $5,000? Are there actually people who are willing to pay that much for this tiny fabric? The only item I could afford was a sparkly hairpin. So be it. I gritted my teeth, taking the hairpin to the checkout counter, along with all the cash I had on me and the membership card. But surprisingly, not only did I get the hairpin for free, but they also gifted me this cute bag. Apparently, it was my birthday. Well, Sophia's birthday, to be exact. Honestly, I felt kind of guilty enjoying these services in Sophia's name. But I didn't spend any of her money. Seeing as this bag's a freebie, I get to keep it, right? The next day, I settled on a simple but pretty dress and my beautiful new bag and wore them to school, as I planned to go straight from there to the party. When my best friend Anna came over to me, she took one look at my bag, then <gasps> gaped in disbelief. A Chanel bag? Did you sell a kidney to buy it? <laughs> it was a gift. Uh, where did you get that? That's a limited edition for VIP members of the Crystal Lane Mall only. Spill it. It's a fake, yeah? Kiera and her unruly friends were at it again. I tried to pull Anna away as I didn't want any trouble, 
but she still managed to clap back at them. It's 100% authentic! Maisie's rich boyfriend got it for her! Jealous much? Kiera sneered, then said unless I called my boyfriend over, she would tell the whole school that we were tragic liars. Come on, Maisie! Show them what humiliation feels like! Oh no! What should I do? Thanks to Anna's expectant looks and Kiera's smug grin, I had no choice but to ask Roman to pick me up after school. Um, he says he'll come get me after class. As soon as I stepped out of the school gate, I saw Roman waiting next to a shiny Bugatti Chiron. He greeted me with a smile, then opened the door for me. I didn't need to turn around to know that Kiera was watching me with fiery eyes. After this, she wouldn't dare to look down on me again, right? Ooh, this place was even more lavish than I imagined. As we were early, Roman invited me to sing a song while he played the piano. I started singing, and he too joined in to harmonize, and this moment felt just great. How cool was it seeing him all immersed in music? By the time we finished our performance, I realized a crowd had gathered around us, and they all burst into wild applause. An angelic voice and a genius musician. What a perfect couple. I turned to Roman and saw him smiling fondly at me. Wow, I knew my parents said you were good, but I had no idea you'd be that incredible. Feeling my face heating up, I quickly excused myself, then ran to the bathroom, well, once I could find it, to calm down. Yeah, so this was a confusing mess, but it didn't change the fact that my heart was still thudding like crazy. This experience was like daydreaming, but maybe I should tell him the truth before things went too far. I returned to see Roman talking with a girl. Seeing me coming, Roman waved me over and said, Here she is. Hey, Sophia. I've just been chatting with your little sister. Oh no, I was going to tell Roman the truth myself, but when the girl turned around and isn't that Kiera? So Kiera is my, I mean, Sophia's sister? Kiera seemed as surprised as I was as she made up an excuse and left. Huh, did she really just leave without making a scene? The next day, I turned up at school with the wallet and looked for Kiera, only I couldn't find her anywhere. When the last bell rang, I received a message from her that said, Meet me in the alley behind school. I nervously arrived at the rendezvous spot and saw Kiera waiting there. Here's your sister's wallet. Sorry I didn't return it sooner. But to my surprise, she didn't even take the wallet. Thief, you'll pay for that. What did she mean by that? Let me be clear, I didn't steal this. I just picked it up by accident. I was always going to hand it in. Then why did you use my sister's name and membership cards? I just, no more excuses, stealing is still stealing. If you don't want everyone, including Roman, to know that you're an identity thief, you'd better do what I say. You will sing for me to lip sync at the city's upcoming singing contest. Singing contest? But Kiera's a dancer, not a singer. Suddenly, a voice from behind startled me. Here you are, Sophia. I've been looking for you. I turned and saw Roman's happy, Oh, so cute face. He'd be so gutted when he found out that I'd lied to him from the start. Sensing my feelings, Kiera just smirked at me before she left. Remember our deal, sister? It turned out that Roman had just finished composing a new song that day and wanted me to record a demo for it at his studio. But this isn't right. I hesitated, then blurted out, Roman, actually, I'm not. Roman interrupted before I could finish my sentence and showed me the poster of an upcoming singing contest. Oh, it was the one Kiera mentioned earlier. You should give it a try. It's a good opportunity. I shook my head sadly, but I can't. Why? How can I tell Roman that I can't participate in the contest because I have to help Kiera lip sync? So I just told him some baloney about having a family thing on that day. When I got home, I decided there's only one thing for it. I had to block Roman. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, but I had to stop this web of lies now before they overtook my life. On the day of the singing contest, although I'd pre-recorded the song for Kiera, she still dragged me along with her. Hmm, that's odd. She didn't seem her usual brash self. Maybe the nerves had got to her? Then, midway through her performance, she misjudged a move and her mic clattered to the floor. As she was standing there dumbfounded, my voice continued to blast out. The whole room fell silent. Then slowly, the murmurs began to rise. Everyone pointed, 
and commented on Kiera, and I heard the man sitting next to me muttering, She's brought more shame on our family. How could I tell anyone that's my daughter? Oh, so this is Kiera's father? And the woman sitting next to him, probably her mother, was also shaking her head in boredom. At that moment, a staff member approached them to say something, and I could see their faces turn pale before they rushed out of the auditorium. Seeing that, Kiera burst into tears, then rushed off the stage. Jeez, how can parents treat their child like that? Kiera may have been a mean girl, but she didn't deserve that. I was about to go check if she was okay when a hand pulled me back. It was Roman. Maisie, it's your turn. Right at that moment, the host of the show called me to the stage by my real name. Huh? What was going on? I turned to look at Roman, but grinning, he just wished me luck and handed me the mic. And the music started. It was the song that Roman and I had sung together. I took a deep breath to calm myself, then sang my heart out. When I ended the performance, all three judges stood up to applaud, and the audience cheered me on. Oh dear, am I dreaming? What is all this? Do you know who I really am? Yeah, of course. I figured that out ages ago. Turns out me not knowing where the restrooms were in the country club gave the game away. <laughs> so he did his research and found out that I wasn't actually Sophia. Only because he still wanted to see me, he pretended not to know so we could carry on like normal. He also accidentally witnessed Kiera making me sing for her performance, so he decided to register me. Talking about Kiera, I wanted to make sure she was okay. We searched around and found her sitting outside, sobbing. It's okay, there will be other competitions. I'm not upset about that. It's my sister, she's missing. Through tears, Kiera told us about how from a young age, her parents wanted her and her sister to pursue a career in music. However, Kiera found a love of dance while Sophia excelled at singing making her favorable to their parents. Regardless of how many dance contests Kiera won, they always overlooked her talent. Then, when she excitedly told them that she'd bagged the lead dance role in the school play, they just went on about Sophia instead. So, feeling disheartened and jealous, Kiera threw away her sister's wallet, the one that I accidentally picked up that day. In this singing contest, Kiera wanted to win against her sister in front of their parents for once, so she got me into this whole lip-syncing plan of hers. But last night, Sophia found out about it, and they had an argument. Then, in anger, Kiera blurted out nasty things, such as how she longed for Sophia to vanish from her life. Only that morning, she woke up and found that her sister had actually gone. Until now, Sophia still hadn't even shown up at the auditorium when it's soon going to be her turn to perform. What if Sophia never comes back? I shouldn't have been so mean. Roman and I comforted Kiera. Then we went to find Sophia together. Kiera took us to Sophia's fave places, but she was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, I remembered the picture carefully inserted inside her wallet. This must be a special place for her. This is my family's old house. We used to live here when I was little. We rushed over there and found Sophia sitting idly in front of the house. The two of them ran into each other's arms and sobbed like two children. Through tears, they talked it all out. Turns out, while Kiera was jealous of her sister, Sophia didn't have it any better either. She has been pressured by their parents' expectations since forever, and she did always feel sorry for Kiera because of all the privileges she had. You know, you can't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. If singing is your passion, feel free to live it to the fullest. But if it's not, don't be afraid to pursue what makes you happy. I mean, you're actually a really awesome dancer. So, in the end, Sophia and Kiera made up. After a big fight with their parents, the two sisters were free to pursue their own passion. Kiera focused on dancing, while Sophia and her friends formed an indie band like she always wanted. As for me, well, I've learned a lesson that if you find a lost item, take it to the cop station immediately. Luckily for me, it hasn't turned out so bad. I helped two sisters find peace, and even got myself this handsome, super talented musician.
My phone beeped with a new message. Emma, I've got something to do nearby, so let's meet there. See ya. It was from Tony, my childhood friend from the orphanage back in Missouri. Yep, that's right. I ended up in an orphanage after my mom passed away when I was only four years old. But things were even worse for Tony and him. They'd been left outside the orphanage door without anyone even knowing who their parents were. And now, here I am, on my way to visit his grave, as today's his death anniversary. <sighs> Time flies. I can hardly believe it's been ten years already. I picked up some flowers, then drove to the cemetery. Tony was already there waiting for me. I smiled and waved, but my heart felt heavy. Back when we were 14, we'd been joined at the hip, Tony, Thomas, and me. I had a secret crush on Thomas, but I never got the chance to tell him. It had all happened so fast on that day. We were just kids, young and dumb. We'd snuck out to go play by the riverbank. One minute we were splashing each other in the river, the next moment Thomas was being carried away in the current. I tried to save him, but Tony pulled me back to shore. Even thinking about it now, I still couldn't help but burst into tears. Don't cry, Em. I'll always be here for you. And I knew he would be. Deep down, I knew Tony always had feelings for me. But I didn't feel the same way. <sighs> After that, Tony drove me home. Seeing my exhausted look, he said before I went inside, Get a good night's sleep, Em. Remember, we've got that interview tomorrow. Gosh, I almost forgot. Tony probably thought I was the worst employee ever. <laughs> and yes, you can guess it, Tony is my boss. After years in the orphanage, he was adopted by a super smart family that had inspired him to strive to become someone important, and he'd eventually built a food startup. Anyway, the following morning, despite still feeling worn out, I had no choice but to put on a brave face to go to work as I had a marketing team to lead. But as I walked into the lobby, a guy bumped into me. He helped me up and frantically apologized, explaining he was in a rush. I looked up and was about to nag him, but wait, why does he look so familiar? In fact, he looked exactly like, it's you, you, I stammered, but I couldn't even finish my sentences because he'd rushed into the lift and the doors had closed. I must have been seeing things. Honestly, throughout the whole interview, I could barely concentrate. Could there be two people looking that similar on this earth? I was lost in thought when the next applicant came in, and it was him. Both Tony and I stared in shock. He was the splitting image of Thomas. But it couldn't be. I mean, Thomas had died years ago. We both were too stunned to say anything, until his voice broke the silence. Hi, I'm Dustin, and I'm here to interview for the marketing position. I looked at Tony, and he looked just as confused as I did. But, yeah, it wasn't Thomas. This guy was from Illinois, and had never even been to Missouri. Okay, so here's Thomas's doppelganger. Fair enough. The interview went well, and even though he was a bit arrogant, he knew what he was doing, so we hired him. When I left the room, surprisingly, Dustin was still waiting for me outside. He offered to treat me to lunch as an apology for earlier. I agreed, as I was desperate to ask him more questions. During lunch, I kept mentioning the orphanage, some of Thomas's hobbies and things he hated, but Dustin didn't even bat an eyelid. I was disappointed, because I really hoped Dustin would actually be Thomas. That night, I barely slept. I couldn't stop thinking about Dustin. It's ridiculous, but I still had a strong feeling that he really was my childhood sweetheart. Suddenly, I got a message from Tony. Saw you hanging out with Dustin. Wake up, Em. He's not Thomas. Ugh, I didn't need to hear that. The next day, I couldn't take my eyes off of Dustin. At lunch, I watched as he put honey on his watermelon, and I almost freaked out. That was exactly what Thomas used to do. Oh my, I blurted out. I then told Tony what I just saw as soon as he sat down, but he just laughed and said, Honestly, um, tons of people do that. 
Do you really think that our Thomas could be that arrogant? Seeing that I was still unfazed, he continued. But if you still want to check, just give him a peach. Things can change, but allergies don't, right? OMG, Tony was a genius. He probably was just kidding, but I was super serious. So the next day, I bought Dustin a peach pie to welcome him to the team. But to my surprise, he ate it up with pleasure and seemed totally fine. Okay, clearly I needed to let this go. He wasn't Thomas. End of. But if only things were that simple. And even though I knew Dustin wasn't Thomas, I still felt attracted to him. He was smart and sweet and so much fun to be around. Eventually, we started hanging out and became very close. We didn't actually make anything official, but we were low-key dating already. However, it was impossible to hide things from Tony. One time, our company went on a team bonding weekend, and we'd arranged a tennis competition. We had to pair up, so obviously I would go with Dustin, but as we're about to go sign up, then Tony came to ask me to be his partner too. My god, it was so awkward. Then Tony said in a very sulky tone, Okay, how about we have a little competition? The winner gets to pair up with Emma. And so they had a swimming race. That's so embarrassing. I knew Dustin couldn't swim, so I started to panic, but he got in the pool anyway. Obviously, Tony won, but who cares? He was acting like a child. I rushed over to help Dustin, who was left coughing and choking on the water. And at that moment, I realized that I was falling for him so much. But since then, there were rumors in the company that Dustin was only flirting with me to get promoted. One morning, we were walking through the lobby together when two girls started whispering about us. So Dustin took my hand and went straight to the girls saying, I love Emma. What's wrong with that? Hmm. Tell me. Go on. At that exact moment, Tony appeared and asked if he could have a word with Dustin in his office. I was so nervous. Now everyone knew we were in some weird triangle, and I didn't like it one bit. Then one of my colleagues overheard Tony telling Dustin that if he didn't leave me alone, he'd be fired. I couldn't believe it! I went to find Tony right away, and before I could even confront him, he said, Yes, it's true. I asked those girls to start the rumors, and I also asked that jerk to give up on you. It was me. I did it all. I just don't get it, Em. Why have I ever been good enough for you? Tony, wait. It's been ten years. Why couldn't you give me a chance? Why can't you let Thomas go? Some guy who looks like him walks up and you totally forget about me? He's a loser compared to Thomas. Don't you dare call him a loser, I said. See? In the end... You still care about him only, not me. Tony shouted and stormed off. I hated to be in this situation. On the one hand, I truly liked Dustin, but Tony was not only my lifesaver, but also my best friend, who'd stuck by my side through all the highs and lows. What a dilemma. In the end, I decided to have a little space from Dustin, just until things cooled down. Maybe then the rumors would stop, and people would quit being so negative about him. But that wasn't to be so. You see, our new product that hadn't even been released yet suddenly appeared on the website of our direct competitor. Someone must have leaked the confidential file. But who? An investigation was opened and all of our computers were checked. You won't believe it, but the IT team had been able to recover a deleted email that had been sent to our rivals from Dustin's outbox. Dustin denied it, and he demanded to check the CCTV. That's how we caught Mike, one of our senior employees, at Dustin's computer sneakily doing something. And to think, he'd put the blame on Dustin! After the truth came out, I went over to Dustin, but he seemed mad as he said, You think I'm a jerk too, don't you? That's why you've been giving me the cold shoulder. I told him I never believed he'd done it. Then I took his hand. I'm so sorry. It's just that I've been through some stuff. Then we hugged. Oh my, I missed him so much. But the drama didn't end there. The info leaked had caused our company huge losses. We had thousands of meetings and the stress was unreal. Feeling so deflated, I went up to the rooftop to get some air. 
Suddenly, I heard Dustin's voice somewhere. He was on the phone with someone, talking about some plan to steal our company's products. No way! Without even thinking, I charged over and snatched his phone away to see that he was talking to... Mike? Oh. My. God. Had they been accomplices from the beginning? I was so angry, but actually more disappointed. So I asked him to resign and stay away from my sight. I know I should have exposed him to the whole company instead of letting him go that easy, but I guess my heart couldn't bear to do that. <sighs> I felt so bad, especially towards Tony, the best friend who's always by my side, while I was busy chasing after a jerk. I lost contact with Dustin after that, and I barely had time to think about it because our company was on the brink of bankruptcy. But one day, I got a call from him followed by a message saying, Please don't ignore me. I've got something important to tell you. So we met up the next day at a coffee shop, and as soon as I saw him, I said, Look, Dustin, I've had enough of your lies. Please just get to the point. Then he replied, Emma, I admit that I only came to work for your company to steal your ideas, but seeing you and Tony after all these years, and falling for you all over again, well... That wasn't part of my plan. I was confused. After all these years? What are you talking about? Then he showed me his wrist, and he was wearing a friendship bracelet. Remember this? You gave it to me on my birthday ten years ago. O-M-G. What was going on? I couldn't believe my eyes. I'd given this to Thomas. But then why... But the peach... I continued. He just laughed and said, I overheard you guys' plan, so I made sure to take allergy meds just before. Then he went on to explain that he was Thomas, and that he'd been lucky enough to be saved that day on the river. There was a family who were out in the river searching for their drowned son, but instead of finding him, they found Thomas, and so they kindly adopted him and changed his name to their sons, Dustin. This was insane! Here was Thomas right in front of me, after all these years. And guess what? His adoptive father is the director of our rival company, and so he'd asked Dustin, or should I say Thomas, to come and infiltrate our company. Thomas kept apologizing for it, saying how much it had tormented him, and that he just missed me and had to tell me the truth. My head was spinning. This was all too much. I needed a moment to think it all through. But in the end, we decided that he could help our company by uploading a post to expose the truth. Obviously, as soon as Tony heard about it all, he was furious. He was mostly mad at me because I'd covered for Thomas. He'd even stopped talking to me for a while. But putting that aside, after Thomas's post, things got better for our company. We were able to launch new products as scheduled, and he even contributed some capital to help with our new project. Now our companies are still rivals, but at least it's now a fair competition. As for Tony and I, we eventually made up. He came to find me one day after work and said, Um, I'm so sorry for how childish I've been. I was just jealous of you and Thomas. I was too selfish to consider your feelings. But you and Thomas, I want you guys to be together. You two are made for each other. I couldn't stop crying as he said that. It meant so much to me. And guess what? It has now been a whole year since Thomas came back into our lives, and the three of us are back to being the best of friends. Oh, and I should probably add that Thomas and I are engaged. We're so happy, and we're even opening an orphanage together for homeless kids like us. I'm going through many phases, but I finally found peace in life. I guess it all worked out after all. Hey guys, Private Davis here. Yep, Taylor Davis, the girl who secretly disguised herself as her twin brother to attend an all-boy military school. In the last part, I had to deal with my fair share of challenges, but having Tom and Henry, my two best pals by my side, made things way easier. But still, there were problems my two comrades couldn't help me with, such as this situation right now involving Ellis, finding out about my real identity. Not that I'm interested in your mess. But I need to find my brother Jacob. 
So, let's make a deal. I'll keep your secret if you help me find him. What? How am I meant to find a guy I don't even know? To my surprise, Ellis then truthfully told me his story. Turns out, he came to this school for two reasons. To punish those who picked on Jacob, and to find clues about his disappearance. Meanwhile, I coincidentally met this Jacob guy outside of school and found his dog tag, so I was the only lead he had for now. But could I really trust this guy? I mean, just look at what he did to Eric. If you don't want to do it, then I can go to the principal's office. Okay, so what? I found the dog tag while we snuck out to a local girl's school. That's all I know. If you spill my secret, I won't let you find your brother in peace either. So you better know a way to take me to that school. I'll pick the time to make a move and you just try your best not to get caught. The next morning, I was walking to class as usual when I passed a bunch of guys huddled together, whispering something about me? Huh? Wait, did Ellis reveal my identity to everyone? Such a fraud! I ran to find him, but accidentally crashed into this boy called Finley. I helped him up as the whispers around us got even louder. Guess you're one of the alleged suspects too. Finley then told me that yesterday, someone discovered a box that looked just like a pack of candy in the bathroom, but inside were a bunch of tampons. So now the students thought there was either a pervert on campus, or that one of us was secretly a girl. And according to them, anyone who never joined the public shower was suspicious. Oh no, what if they found out the tampons were mine? Guys, hot girl alert! Everyone immediately forgot about me and flocked to him. The buzz on campus was that an inspection officer was staying here for a few months, and he'd brought his beautiful daughter Ivy along with him. People said she looks like a fairy with this ethereal vibe. Just then the inspector, Ivy, and his group stepped into the hallway. I watched them all drool over her. Poof, please. Anyone would think they'd never seen a girl before. She walked past these silly boys with a smug smile, but as soon as she caught sight of me standing there unfazed, she froze to the spot and stared straight at me. What? Was I supposed to show off my smitten face too? Dad, I need someone to show me around school. Can I take him? What? Why me? I couldn't even say anything as the principal had already agreed. Come on, let's go. Oh, you're so muscular. Ew, gross! Later on, she shooed Henry and Tom out of the entertainment room just because she wanted to spend time alone with me. Another time, when we were about to do our cleaning duty, Ivy popped out of nowhere and asked me to go hang with her. She even stopped two guys passing by and did her whole fluttering eyelashes routine to persuade them to do my cleaning duties instead. Ivy, I appreciate your help, but we all have our chores to do. This isn't fair on the others. Don't you get it, Jack? I did all this because I want to be close to you. I like you. I, uh, um, I think you'll be better suited to someone else. Then I ran out of there, leaving everyone behind stunned at my harsh rejection. For the next couple of days, Ivy was furious and looked at me like she wanted to tear me to pieces. And the whispers started circulating again. They said that refusing a girl as beautiful as Ivy meant that I must have not had any interest in girls. Or even worse, I probably was a girl myself, and I was the one who dropped the tampons in the bathroom. Gosh, this was bad. That night, as usual, I just stepped out of the communal bathroom after a late night shower when someone suddenly dragged me into the equipment room. It was Ellis. What's going on? Just then, footsteps resounded from the hall. I held my breath as I anxiously waited for them to pass by. Phew, that was close. Turns out, that afternoon, Ellis heard the officers discussing security tightening, especially in the student communal bathroom area at night. So he waited for me outside and hid me just in time. He saved me. We tried to sneak through the new building close to our dorm, but unfortunately bumped into Ivy. What are you doing here? Trying to sneak out, huh? Officer- It's not what you think, I- Jack came here to confess his feelings to you, right? Jack? Oh, uh, um, yes. I- I think I'm fond of you. Oh yeah? Then why did you refuse me the other day? He was just too insecure. I mean- you're quite the catch with your high-up dad while well, he's just a private. But he can't ignore his feelings for you any longer, so... Ugh, cringe. But it worked, as Ivy looked so moved and lunged forward to hug me. Then I guess, 
we officially became a couple? <laughs> and as Ellis planned, the rumors about me being a girl were replaced with jealous gazes. Now Ivy followed me to every class, every break time, I barely had any time alone. This tactical combat course was my only chance to get away from her. We had to go to this warehouse to practice saving a mannequin captive. I was focusing on the mission, but still got caught by an enemy. Wait, it was Ellis? He seemed agitated and told me we needed to leave this Friday afternoon. As we were discussing how to sneak out of school, why do you need to meet up? We almost jumped out of our skin. Ivy! Why are you sneaking up on us? What did you hear? Just you asking my boyfriend out? Oh, I see what's going on here. You like Jack, don't you? Weirdly, Ellis seemed flustered. He was sweating and mumbling out nonsense. Was he that scared of Ivy? Suddenly, Ivy grabbed my collar, trying to kiss me? Panicked, I shoved her duck face away. Just in time, the siren went off, signaling the course was over, so I ran out of there. To avoid Ivy, the plan changed to early Friday morning. I had to fake an injury to get out of class. Ellis and I met up at the back door, jumped into the milk delivery truck, and let it take us to the local girls' school. When we arrived, I led him to the school entrance where I'd found Jacob's dog tag. We spoke to some students, but no one knew who Jacob was, and people started to stare at us as if we were creeps. <sighs> we were about to give up when this woman approached us. Why are you looking for Jacob? You look exactly like him. Turned out, she's Mrs. Walker, a teacher here, and she knows Jacob. Her husband found him dazed and injured at the edge of the woods and took him in. His health got better with time, but his happiness didn't. So when prom came, Mrs. Walker told Jacob to go and enjoy the night, hoping he'd feel better. But he returned early and was only invested in this dog tag he'd picked up from someone named Jack Davis, since that was also the name of Jacob's favorite drag queen who performed at big theaters. This incident then gave Jacob a push to take action. He always wanted to live with his true self, but he'd been lost along the way. So he decided to venture to find Jack Davis, the role model that might be the only one who could help him now. He had parted ways with the walkers to go on this self-discovery journey not long ago. On the way back, Ellis and I stayed quiet. I didn't expect Jacob to know my twin brother. Should I tell Ellis that I might know where Jacob went? But I couldn't just lead him to my home to find his brother as... My parents didn't know I'd disguised as Jack and joined this all-boy military school. If they ever found out about this, I could kiss my soldier dreams goodbye. When the truck stopped, I got off and was about to go back to the dorm when Ellis pulled my hand. You know that Jack, right? Is he your twin brother? If it's true, then please tell me where he is. I'm sorry, but I can't. I, I've got homework to do. Then I left as he called after me. The next day, I tried to avoid Ellis, but he was ahead of me. He was desperate, but I just shook my head. Y you selfish fraud! Right away, Tom ran to stand between me and Ellis while Henry defended me. What, you want to become the next Eric? Get lost, you jerk! Oh no. I tried explaining to them that Ellis didn't mean any harm, but they didn't listen and just pulled me away from him. I felt so bad. For that whole day, I kept thinking about what had happened. Ellis was right. I was selfish. He might never see his brother again because of me. I had to go help him. But when I got to his room, his roommate said he'd already taken his annual leave to go find his brother. Oh no. He must have figured out my home address somehow. I gotta go home, but how to get out of school? It wasn't milk delivery day. As I was thinking, Tom and Henry approached me, asking why I was acting so weird. <sighs> This was it. I guess I shouldn't lie to them any longer. Guys, I have something to tell you. I'm actually a girl. Then I told them why I came here in the first place, how things got entangled with Ellis, and now he went looking for my house as his brother might be there. I waited for them to be mad, but instead, they smiled gently at me. That's a pretty big secret to carry. Girl or boy, this changes nothing. You're still our friend. They were not angry with me. I felt so relieved knowing that I didn't have to hide anything from them anymore. Hmm, now I just needed to figure out a way to go home. We can handle this. Go wait near the back gate. And I did. Just in time, the fire alarm went off, 
and all officers guarding the gate ran to that direction. A few seconds later, the back gate suddenly opened and the CCTV went off, and I just slid through easily. Luckily, I arrived home before Ellis did. My heart was pounding when I knocked on the door. Then mom and dad opened it. Needless to say, <gasps> seeing their daughter dressed as a boy soldier was a huge shock. I quickly explained to them how I'd secretly taken Jack's place, and their faces kept turning darker and darker. How could you lie to us, then illegally enter an all-boys military school? What were you thinking? Right then, Jack, my twin, rushed down the stairs. He immediately got what was going on and backed me up. Mom, Dad, this has been Taylor's dream ever since she was little. This is dangerous. If you get caught, you could be sent to a juvenile center. Pack your bags and quit the school right now. In that heated moment, Ellis barged in. Jacob? Jacob! Are you here? Where did you hide him? I tried to calm him, but it was no use. The whole scene was chaotic. Then suddenly, he stopped dead, staring at the stairs. Huh? Someone else was here. Someone with silky, long hair, a beautifully made-up face, and a super pretty dress. It was... Jacob. He apologized to my parents for his brother's behavior, then we all sat down as he told us how he realized from a young age that he was interested in feminine things. So he used to sneak into his mom's closet and use her clothes and makeup. One time, his parents caught him and they were so worried about his deviant behavior, they forced him to attend military school, hoping to straighten him up. But of course, he didn't fit in there and was fed up with being teased by Eric. So when he saw a chance to run away, he did so without hesitation, cutting off all ties with the school and his family. Luckily, the walkers found him in the woods and took great care of him. Still, it wasn't enough. He needed to discover his true self. So we came to Jack's. I beg of you, don't make me go back home again. I can't stand the disappointed look on mom and dad's faces. I just want to be myself. I know it must be hard, but you gotta go home and face your parents. Once they know how you truly feel, they'll understand. Mom, dad, I'm sorry for being so reckless, but being a soldier is my dream. Please give me a chance. <sighs> I can't let you do it, but you can have till the end of the semester to pack your stuff and say your goodbyes. That's it. Just then, I heard footsteps outside. It was Ivy. What was she doing here? You tricked me. I already knew there was something weird going on with you and Ellis. But you're a... girl? <laughs> Lucky me I had your whole secret recorded here. Let's see how my dad punishes you, fraud. This is bad. Ellis and I jumped into his car and drove back to the school immediately but we arrived back to an unexpected situation. The principal, aka Eric's dad, was already packing his things, and a strange lady with a stern look was sitting at his desk. Wait, did this mean we had a new principal? Yep, turns out the inspection officer came to school to investigate our principal on allegations that he'd been condoning his son's mistreatment of other students. And it was none other than Ellis here who had been gathering up evidence to help him. Then what about me? Well. In return for Ellis's assistance, the officer decided to let me stay and study here. In fact, the new principal even had some other plans. Finally, it's the end of the semester. Whew. And you know what? Our school now officially welcomes female students, which means I'm legitimately the first girl in school. I'm so grateful for our new principal. Meanwhile, me, Henry, and Tom are still the best of comrades, obviously. Nothing could ever stand between us. And of course, my parents are okay with me staying since I don't have to hide my real identity anymore. About Jacob, he actually listened to Jack's advice and went home to talk to his parents. They were shocked to see him like that, but as he poured his heart out to them, they decided to slowly accept the real him. As for his brother, Ellis, we went through a lot together, and now we're best friends. There might be some sparks between us though, but I don't know. Let's just wait and see. Hey, I'm Amy. I'm 23, and I've been besties with my neighbor Drew for years. But I've never thought of sabotaging his wedding, ever. Heck, I thought I'd be the one marrying him. Well, I mean, if no one better came along, Drew's two years older than me. But back then, I wasn't your regular girly girl. 
Instead, I much preferred hanging out with the boys and playing basketball, so we quickly became best friends. But when I hit puberty, how I looked began to matter more to me, so I started making efforts and behaved more like a lady, result being that guys started noticing me, Drew included. One time back in high school, Drew asked me out, but I just laughed it off and told him to stop kidding. In other words, I rejected him. It was good to know that I had him as a backup, but right then and there, I didn't want to date him. Why would I, when I could have any boy in the school? After that, he pretty much did anything I asked, treated me like a princess, and followed me everywhere I went. Heck, we were so close that it was an in-joke with my family that we would end up together. When I went to study in Europe for three years, Drew was still there for me when I went through tough times, or even breakups. Being in a different country meant that Drew and I didn't talk as much as we used to, but I knew that if I needed him, then all I needed to do was click my fingers and he'd appear. Whenever I came back home for the holidays, he was always there at the airport waiting to pick me up. So when I finished my studies and arrived home for good, I expected him to be there to pick me up with a large bunch of flowers in hand. But no, he didn't show up. It was only my parents waiting for me. On the journey home, I sat there sulking. Drew had majorly annoyed me. How dare he stand me up? Sensing my mood, Mom asked, Sweetie, what's up? Aren't you happy to be back? I muttered out, Yeah, I just don't appreciate Drew not picking me up. Mom casually said, Oh, right. Although, I suppose planning the wedding is keeping him busy. I'm sure he just forgot. I sat upright in my seat. What? Wedding? Whose wedding? My mom then acted surprised. He didn't tell you? Oh, how busy the groom-to-be must be. <laughs> Honey, it's Drew's wedding. This uneasy feeling washed over me. I felt like I'd been cheated on. Okay, so I didn't love him. But that's not the point. How dare some girl come along and steal him away from me? I arrived home to see Drew pacing the curb. He spotted me and gave me an excited wave. I stormed over to him and shouted out, Why didn't you tell me you're getting married? He smiled and then replied, I'm sorry, Amy. I just wanted to do it in person as I have an important question to ask you. He sounded so serious. Then he reached into his pocket. OMG, was he going to propose to me? Has this all been a prank leading to this moment? But no, he pulled out a packet of mints and offered me one. At that moment, a girl walked out of his house and passed him a coffee. He wrapped his arms around her waist and kissed the top of her head. Yuck! Amy, you remember Emily, right? She was in your year at school. She's my fiancé. We'd like to ask you to be our bridesmaid. Emily added, Actually, he wanted you to be his best man, since we all know how close you guys are, but that would look a little strange, don't you think? I just stood there speechless with my mouth wide open. No, I didn't remember this Emily girl from school, and I didn't want to be her stupid bridesmaid. Drew joked, Aren't you happy for me? I know you'll love this. That's why I waited till now to tell you, to be able to see your over-the-top reaction. <laughs> I had no reaction. I literally couldn't find any words to say and just stood there motionless as the realization that the guy I could always count on was now someone else's, and I was meant to help them out with their lame wedding. I tried being happy for them, but they just made me feel so sick. Now whenever I wanted to see Drew, there's Emily tagging along, and they always talk to each other in this annoying high-pitched voice, not to mention the kissing and hugging every five seconds. I couldn't stand seeing their PDA for another moment, so I decided to pull some mischievous pranks. First, I kept asking Emily to eat fast foods with me, which I told her that I extremely craved for since I'd been abroad for so long. But the real reason was just that I wanted her to gain weight quickly and be unable to fit into her wedding dress. And I succeeded. When the three of us visited the wedding shop, whichever dress that Emily liked to try, she couldn't fit in. So the only one that fitted her looked very old-fashioned and ugly. Seeing her sulky face, I was so happy inside. Until Drew ran towards her and comforted her, he praised her as the most beautiful woman in the world, no matter what she wore. And he was very lucky to marry her. Ugh. I want to puke for real. A few days later, Emily held her bachelorette party. As the party venue was close to my house, Emily and her friends decided to come over to prepare themselves before the party. Though I found it bothersome at first, then I realized that it's a good opportunity for another prank. 
That afternoon, when they were all busy putting on makeup and getting dressed, I offered to help Emily iron her dress as I was ironing mine. She agreed and handed me the dress. I secretly turned up the iron's temperature and it burnt her silk dress in a blink. I screamed and acted like it was an accident. Emily and her friends immediately rushed over. They were shocked to see the dress was totally ruined. I apologized frantically as tears started to well up in Emily's eyes. Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? A friend of Emily asked me. Then everyone gave me a dirty look. No, don't say that. Amy's just trying to help me, Emily said through tears. Jeez, why did she have to be so nice? After that, she called Drew, cried desperately, and told him everything. And just half an hour later, Drew showed up and handed Emily a brand new dress, which is even prettier than the old one. Emily hugged Drew, kissed him on the cheek, and went on and on about how he's the best. Yuck. Suddenly, some of Emily's friends whispered something like, Emily is so lucky to have a fiancé like Drew. Unlike Carl, he is really useless. So Carl was Emily's ex, right? I wondered if he also wanted to break this wedding like me. So I did some digging online and easily found Carl. Then I messaged him, telling him I was Emily's bridesmaid and I had something super urgent to tell him about her. He agreed to meet me at a bar downtown. First impression, this guy's actually kinda cute. Turns out, goody two-shoes Emily has good taste in guys. As I sat down next to him, I noticed that Carl had been drinking a lot. But... I didn't think much of it at the time. I gave my best convincing look and told him, Emily still has feelings for you. She's now having cold feet about the wedding. At first, he didn't say much. He just kept on drinking. But suddenly, he stood up and slurred out how he needed to confess his love to her. Right now! So I followed him to her house. That night, the bridesmaids were having a sleepover at Emily's to help her prepare the guest list for the wedding and stuff. I quickly came in and made up some excuse for showing up late. And that's when we all heard something noisy coming from outside. Everyone ran to the porch to check out Carl begin to drunkenly slur out something like, I will always love you and such. Emily looked shocked and tried persuading Carl to go home. I watched on with a secret smirk as he threw up in her pot plant, accused the other bridesmaids of being traitors, and tripped over the cat as he tried to enter her house. Carl eventually passed out on the couch, and Emily, being Emily, placed a blanket over him. She didn't even look angry. Why? I couldn't understand why I had done so many things, but she could be so calm and overcame everything. The next day, when Carl woke up, they talked, and I was terrified Carl would tell Emily about my involvement. But instead, he apologized to her, wished her the best for the future, then left. A few days later, Carl asked me to meet him at a coffee shop. He asked me why I lied to him, as Emily said she was very blissful to marry Drew. I sighed and told him the truth. I also said that I didn't have feelings for Drew, I just hated to see the two of them together. Then Carl said, Don't let jealousy get the best of you. Listen to me, Amy. What we need to do now is restore our life and leave the past behind. I felt down upon hearing his words, but I knew Carl was right. Despite Drew having been my best friend since childhood, it was the moment he needed to have a life of his own. Don't be so sad, Carl said, patting my hand gently. I looked up and was fascinated by not only Carl's look, but also his maturity and sensitivity. The wedding day came. I stood next to Drew and Emily as they exchanged their rings to take a vow to be husband and wife. Somehow, I felt so proud that my best friend found his life partner. But still, I felt a little uneasy inside, until I spotted Carl in the crowd. He walked over, gave me a bright smile, and joked that he was going to spend the rest of the day here so I couldn't cause any more havoc. I laughed out loud and responded, It was more about him than me that would be causing trouble in the wedding. After the ceremony, we spent time together walking through the park and went to an arcade. I have to admit that it was kind of fun and took my mind off things. Since then, something weird happened. I've found myself thinking about Carl a lot. Like, a lot. Am I developing feelings for him? Maybe now is the time for me to find my life partner too. And I think I've found a great candidate. It was such a beautiful weekend, but instead of being out having fun, I was stuck at home. For what, you ask? To teach Excel to a girl who doesn't even know how to use shift key shortcuts. <sighs>
What is the matter with you? I've explained the code twenty times to you already. Um, uh, I... I'm sorry. Let's face it. You suck at this. Try to beat me in your dream. Ugh. If I had to waste one more second sitting next to her, I'd go crazy. Look how fake you are. If you're mad, then just show me. Why do you always have to be misfriendly? Hmm. Let me introduce you. That's Lara, my so-called sister. Two months ago, my mom brought her home and announced, Jeff, I have something to tell you. Back when we broke up for a while, due to your parents' hatred towards me, well, during that time, I found out I was pregnant. I gave birth to our little girl, Lara. I was only 22, and I had no money. So as much as it pained me to do so, I gave her away. I've never stopped thinking about her. And now, well, I've managed to find her. She dabbed at her teary eyes, then handed Dad the DNA test results. Dad was overwhelmed and ran over to hug Laura. They all cried a lot and hugged a lot. As for me, I just stood there in shocked silence as I watched this family reunion take place. It all happened so fast. How was I supposed to believe that it was just a coincidence when Mom suddenly found her long-lost child after so many years? What now, Skylar? Stop being so headstrong. Mom scolded me, then rushed over to Lara and started cuddling her and soothingly stroking her hair. It's not my fault she has the learning capacity of a slug. Stop interfering, else I'll quit teaching her. By the way, those loving mother-daughter things also? Cut it off! It's ridiculous! I know what you're thinking. What's with the attitude towards my mom? The thing is, she's not even my real mom. A few months ago, something crazy happened to me. A strange woman showed up out of nowhere and claimed she was my mom. Say what now? Of course, I told her she'd got the wrong person. But when I saw the selling contract between my mom and her, I froze in shock. Turns out, my mom miscarried a child, but she was too afraid she'd lose her place in the family. So she bought me from this woman. So I was adopted. It's common, right? But still, I don't deserve to be treated like that. I had always been neglected since I was little. Mom never hugged or kissed me. She didn't read me bedtime stories or tuck me into bed at night. All she ever did was snarl at me. Go away! I guess I convinced myself that this was just how Mom was. But then Lara arrived, and Mom is totally different with her. <sighs> I get it now. I get why she treated me so cold, and why I've never felt happy despite growing up in a wealthy family because I'd never belonged here. After the incident with the woman, I confronted mom about it. I get it. I know I'm not your real daughter, and that's why you think it's acceptable to treat me like garbage? Oh, please, stop with the dramatics. Let me tell you this. Even if you did adopt me, I'm still going to prove my efficiency to dad and take over this company by myself. Mom was dumbfounded after hearing that. Then, not long after that, she turned up with Lara. That's why I didn't believe there was no coincidence. She brought Lara back to compete with me. And if that was true, then, what do I have to be scared of? <laughs> How are my two girls? Skylar, are you still helping Lara with her studies? Yeah, Dad. She still helps me every day. Thank you so much. Okay, that's great. When you move past the basics... I think you should take a few more extra courses. Do your best, and try to follow your sister. There's no way she can be as good as me, not even in her wildest dream. Laura is very smart, and she'll soon be up to speed. I'm also teaching her more about our family business. Huh? Is Mom going to teach her more to compete with me? I can obviously see her greed and competitiveness. But whatever. Lara and I are at two distinctly different levels anyway. I am an excellent student at the Columbia Business School, while well, she's just an uneducated nobody. Poof! Please! I have absolutely nothing to worry about. Mom kept forcing her to study, but... See? 
Speaking of mom, she'd been acting weird lately. One minute she treats me like a stubborn stain she can't get rid of, then the next she's trying to set me up with some guy named Dean. He's the son of her super rich colleague. I don't understand why she suddenly feels the need to find me a boyfriend. And dad wasn't helping the situation, as instead of telling mom to stop playing matchmaker, he was encouraging her. Ugh. Okay, I just wanted them to quit bugging me, so in the end, I agreed to talk to this Dean guy. But now, he won't stop messaging me, and he's even shown up at the house. Hmm, I suppose he is kinda handsome and nice, but he's not my type. So I just talked to him out of politeness. Until one time, I saw Lara sneaking a peek at Dean while he was waiting for me in the lobby. Wait, don't tell me she likes Dean? Oh well, she's welcome to my leftovers. I don't like this guy anyway. Then one day, I was walking along the corridor when I received a text from Dean. Skylar, are you free tomorrow? Let's have dinner together. I was about to text back when I suddenly heard Mom and Lara arguing. What's wrong with you, Lara? Why are you secretly dating that jerk? Why not, Dean? He's a good guy. Besides, he told me that there's nothing going on between him and Skylar. So Dean is two-timing us? He snuck out on a date with Lara while flirting with me on the phone all day? What on earth? I tried to keep calm while continuing to listen. You're crazy. Stop this stupid secret dating game at once. What? Why is mom insisting he's a good guy to me, but telling Lara the opposite? Well, mom, which one is it? Is Dean a good match like you told me, or a jerk like you told Lara? He's... He's rich, so keep on dating him and stop bothering me with your nonsense. Ugh, I wasn't born yesterday. There's definitely something wrong with this Dean. The very next day, I decided to go and follow Dean. Oh my gosh, what was he wearing? And why did he go to this slum? Then he gathered with a few other thugs. So it's obvious, Dean definitely was a street guy. That's why mom didn't let Lara get close to him. But why did she match him with me? Could that be a part of her plan to bring me down? Ha! Huh. Nice try! <laughs> I'd had enough spying for one day, so I was about to leave. But then suddenly, I heard a familiar voice which startled me. I turned around, then... What? It's... Mom? How dare you ruin the plan! Mind your words. I did as you said. I told you to flirt with Skylar to distract her, not Laura. Don't think I'm paying you a nickel more. Fine, don't pay me. Just be sure to take me a picture of your husband's face when the real DNA result arrives in his inbox. <laughs> you, you, you! Oh. My. God. Did I just hear it wrong? What DNA results? Could it be? I immediately went home and rushed into my dad's office to look for the DNA certificate that my mom gave him that day. Here it was. What should I do now? That's right. I had to take it to the hospital to have it checked. After pleading and putting pressure on the doctor, he finally admitted that he'd accepted a bribe from Dean to fake the test result. I asked for the original one and... Believe it or not, Lara was not my dad's child. I immediately rushed home and showed my dad the original DNA results. He was so shocked, I had to help him sit down, then get him a glass of water. When he got over the initial shock, he asked me to call Lara and Mum in to confront them. But, oh no, Lara's room was empty. Only one letter was lying on the bed. Sorry, everyone. Dean told me the truth. Thank you all for taking care of me. Especially you, Skylar. I honestly enjoyed being around you. I think you're kind and patient. Please don't ever change. I don't belong in your world, so I can't stay. If we're predestined, we will meet again. Thank you, and sorry again. Love, Lara. Unbelievable! How could you lie to all of us about something like this? 
Knowing she couldn't wriggle out of this one, Mum replied, Okay, Laura isn't yours. I fell pregnant with her after we broke up. I didn't want you to throw me out, so I paid Dean to get a fake DNA certificate. Then I paid him again to date Skylar and distract her from her studies. This business should be Laura's, not hers. But that jerk went and fell for Laura instead. Poor Dad. He looked so heartbroken. Mom tried pleading with him to forgive her, but he told her the trust was broken and that she had to leave. Everything's such a mess. Poor Dad shut himself away in his office, while me, I lay on my bed, staring at the ceiling. I couldn't stop thinking about all of Mom's lies. And what for? Money? Fame? Status? Are all those things worth sacrificing dignity, honor, and trust for? I used to want to compete with Lara, too. But now, it turns out that all of that was just fleeting. Dad, I think I should leave, too. Because I'm not your biological daughter, either. You... 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 I've known for a while. But I've kept quiet, as I was afraid that you would abandon me. Thank you for always being there for me. You're a good man, and you don't deserve all the pain you've been through. Then I told my dad all about how I found out I was adopted, and how my mom paid my real mom to hand me over. Dad froze for a few seconds, then calmly said, Skylar, honey, you'll always be my daughter, and I couldn't be prouder of you. Please, stay here with me. I couldn't hold back my tears. Did dad really want me around? Even after all this crazy stuff? I really love my dad, but I couldn't upset him anymore. The next day, Dad and I went around to Lara's adoptive mom's house. I cleared the air with her and invited her to come back with us. She politely declined. Turns out she just wants a simple life. We still meet up sometimes, and we've actually become pretty good friends. Isn't it amazing? Because before that, we were like water and fire. The fact that I don't have to teach her Excel anymore probably helps. <laughs> there are those who do whatever they can to win fame and fortune, but this often comes at a cost. Mum let greed turn her into a monster, and now she's paying for it. I don't like what she did, but she's still my mum. Well, my adoptive mum anyway. So I still send her subsidies and wish her happiness for the rest of her life. The truth is that... I'd rather forego a huge fortune and live a quiet life than become someone I don't want to be. If it were you, would you do the same to live in peace?